Yay! Hello everyone! Welcome to the Transatlantic Call-In Show, the show where you can call in and talk to some trans people and argue with us, or I guess ask advice if that's what you want to do, though we're both idiots, so maybe just stick to arguing. Um, <laughs> this week you can argue with uh, Katie Montgomery, that's me, uh, internet dickhead, and also the barely away Perpetually tired Dr. Ben, which, oh, I should show off my uh, my new shirt that... A friend started making some trans-related merch, and uh, I don't know if you can see, but it says it says "Doctors Without Binaries" on it, and I oh. thought it was great, so I <laughs> bought it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I'm I'm perpetually tired because I'm currently working nights on the wards, and I went to bed at six a.m. and I'm up now, and I'm off today, but my brain is still on this weird schedule, so I'm here. I'm here, but I might be grumpy today, so uh, don't be stupid, callers. Thanks. <laughs> Perfect day for you to call in. If you would like yes. to call in, the number is just below, but you can also click on the link in the description and call in for free. We have maybe a small amount of space on the lines right now, so if you call in right this second, we should be able to get to your call. But the lines will fill up, so do not deliberate. Uh, you'll miss out on uh, a pretty good combo of hosts, although I do say so myself. I mean... We have to be amongst the least intolerable hosts on this show, or on this channel even, um, I would I would estimate. I don't know what you think about that, Ben, but, you know, we're, we're passable. <laughs> what? Yeah, yeah. It depends on the day for me, really. <laughs> yeah, as long as it's not a weekday, then you're great, so no problem. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, um, what else should I say about this? What, well, what I should say is that you should like and subscribe and write a comment and stuff. But also that if you want to contribute to the show and you are too lazy slash scared slash uh, lazy to call in, then you can also send a super chat of five dollars or more and we will read it out at the end of the show. Um, and it's always a fun time because people people do not show up for Dr. Ben. Team Ben does not show up. Basically, he no. never gets any votes, and that's mm -hmm. what's fun about this show. So let's see a repeat of that usual <laughs> circumstance. <laughs> yeah, it'll be, it'll be great this to week. show up on, on my day off and everyone just be like, fuck off, Ben, get out of here. Um, but, you know, I expect nothing less, so we'll see We'll see what happens today. <laughs> it's their day off too. Team Ben needs a rest of all those super chatting that they <laughs> never that do. they don't do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know where I'm going with this. It's going to make Team Ben <laughs> angry enough to say something. This, this, this is almost like a stereotype a and like a, a meme for like trans masks is like, <laughs> I mean, there's that, um, that stereotype that we just are kind of vibing along and not doing anything until like someone makes us angry enough to actually say something, which like, I mean, it's only partially false. I feel like sometimes I am trying very hard to get the trans mask side of things to like be active and vocal, and it is sometimes difficult uh, to get us engaged. But you know, we're we're working on it. It's it's that uh, it's that possum energy that we're either just like vibing or we're screaming, and there's not really an in between. So. <laughs> well, that's good. I just realized I didn't have a background, <laughs> so I'm just going to pick one right now. Um, so the yeah, void. the of... void is your background. <laughs> Uh, I don't really know what's broken here, but something is drastically wrong on my uh, setup, but that's all okay. Um, so one of the things we do every single week is ask a poll question, and we see what you, the viewers, uh, thought about the question and what your votes were, and maybe have a look at some of the arguments going on in the comments, because this is a skeptic show, therefore we love arguing. Um, but uh, perhaps we could take a look at the poll question from last week. Ben, you weren't here for that, so maybe this is the I first time you find out what it was. Do we have poll questions? Do you know what's fucking shit while the poll's loading up? Uh, <laughs> WebP format images. When you download something in WebP and just literally nothing accepts it, like, who invented this bullshit? Why, where has it come from? <laughs> like, why isn't everything PNG or JPEG just like the olden days? I don't know. They're Garbage. just trying to be special. That that's what it is. Oh, They're just this poll. To... I, I do remember this poll. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> can you be transphobic and a feminist at the same time? 
And uh, we heard my thoughts last week. Ben, what do you think about this? Uh, I didn't actually hear your thoughts. So um, this is actually an interesting poll result of people saying yes. 65 people said yes, and 35% said no. Um, I'm going to say no. I'm going to say you can't be a feminist and a transphobe at the same time because of... Because, of, I mean, transphobia is rooted in misogyny. And we see this, like, misogyny against trans women, misogyny against trans men, which we've talked about multiple times on this show. And, like, as we're seeing these people that are claiming to be feminists and claiming to advocate for women's rights, and then at the same time saying things like, like, we'll get into this week, basically implying that um, biological males are inherently... Uh, intellectually superior than biological females. And it's like, you can't make these transphobic arguments without relying on misogyny. So that's why I'm going to say no, you can't be both at the same time. So this was uh, the kind of the discussion that me and Arden had about this question last time is like, there's a difference between can feminism and transphobia exist at the same time, like rationally, logically? If you follow the conclusions through, mm -hmm. do they contradict or are they complementary or are they orthogonal? And the answer is they contradict. And in that case, I totally agree with you. Uh, feminism and transphobia are opposites. Um, but I guess another way of reading this question is, can you just be a feminist and transphobic at the same time as in, are there some feminists out there who do put time and effort into feminism, or maybe have just discovered feminism, and can they be transphobic? And I think in, if you read it that way, which is a totally different reading of the question, then mm -hmm. the answer is yes. Because, I mean, at what point do you become a feminist? Like, if you discover feminism and you've read some books, and you're like, oh, I'm quite on board with this, but you don't know all of it. You haven't spent years and years thinking about it. Um, and you might, ha and like transphobia, can be a range of things. I mean, you might not be campaigning for trans people to not exist. You might just be, ugh, trans people are a bit weird. You know, I, I'm not really going to talk to one if I if I see one, but otherwise they can do what they want. Like, that's also a form of transphobia too. And I, I feel like that that is not just possible, but common. I think that it's like saying, you know, can you be um, a leftist and also a racist and lots of people say no because leftism is all about equality for everyone but loads of leftists are a little bit racist and there's a problem mm -hmm. in the community so i think in the wider feminist community they haven't fully stamped out homophobia and transphobia and that's because there is always new people coming in and there's always like some people who just don't spend any time focusing on those issues um but yeah, uh, your point about how uh, transphobia is kind of rooted in misogyny does segue very well into this week's mm -hmm. question, um, <laughs> which is pretty ridiculous. Uh, would you like to read it out? Yeah, I can do that. Um, do you think trans women have a biological advantage over cis women at chess and other board games? And this is just like, this is so infuriating to me and i mean well okay I, I guess i have a couple different perspectives on this like number one obviously i'm infuriated at the at e even the thought that anyone with x y chromosomes or whatever male traits uh would be just intellectually superior to anyone without those traits is absolutely ridiculous and um but at the same time the fact that they are making this an issue really highlights what their end game is and what what they actually think so like i i hate the fact that they are doing this but at the same time like i want those viewpoints to be out there so people can stop playing this oh well they're just concerned about you know women's safety and all that like it's not about women's safety and like what we're say seeing with chess like you're not having people punching each other in the face unless you're playing chess chess boxing which i know is a thing <laughs> But like, uh, there isn't a safety risk. <laughs> hey, there isn't... Yeah, chess boxing what? is a thing. Go look it up. Um, but okay. <laughs> no, but like, there isn't a safety risk here with chess. Um, there isn't any kind of athletic advantage that would play any part in chess, uh, except maybe like, if if you're 
playing timed chess and the one person, I don't know, is able to move the chess piece a millisecond faster than the other person. I don't, I don't know, but like it, it's, it's not something that we really consider with chess. And so you are taking purely an intellectual and strategy game and saying that there is a sex based difference, which implies that there is no way that somebody who was assigned female could be equal or better than, than a, a uh, trans woman or a cis man, which is absolutely ridiculous. So if you're watching this and you're wondering why the hell is Ben ranting about trans women being better at chess than cis women, this is, we haven't just conjured this out of nowhere. This is <laughs> unbelievably, but also inevitably and very believable at the same time, the news. Because yesterday, FIDE, which is one of, the, I don't know, I don't know much about chess. It's the major, one of the major, a major um, chess tournament organizing body has decided to ban trans women from women's leagues in chess. Uh, which is just fucking ridiculous. But that is not the whole the whole thing here. So first of all, lots of people's reactions were, why the hell is there women's leagues in chess? And the reason that basically there is two possible reasons why we might want women's leagues in chess. And if neither of them are true, then the idea is stupid. And if one or both are true, then the idea isn't necessarily stupid. And one of them is women face and girls face extra hurdles getting into chess and playing chess. So if chess mm -hmm. clubs were sexist, if girls were dissuaded from joining chess clubs in school, um, if, for, for example, just totally randomly pulled out the air, there was two major sexual assault allegations going on against uh, male grandmaster chess players at the moment, maybe that would be off-putting to some women uh, in trying to get to the top of the game because there is clearly lots of issues of sexism. Sexism might put people off, but if there was a women's only league, you might be like, oh, I can go to chess and not worry about being groped or talked down to like I'm a child or something. Yeah, I'll, I'll go do that. And then mm -hmm. it might get people into the game and then they might get to the point where they feel bold enough that they're like, well, you know what, fuck these men. I'm enough of a feminist and I'm a good enough chess player now. I'm confident that I will compete in the Open League or whatever. Or maybe they don't want to and that's totally fine. So that's one possible reason why you might have women's chess leagues. And spoiler, that's the reason I think is a good reason uh, mm -hmm. and is the only reason. But there's another possible reason. If you perhaps didn't think misogyny existed or you didn't care about it or you didn't think it affected women's performance in anything, then the other reason you might want women's chess leagues is if if women were inherently inferior to men at chess in the same way that lots of uh, macho knobheads will go on and on about UFC or something, they think that women are just stupider at chess than men. Mm -hmm. uh, and that that is uh, factually false. There's no evidence for that at all. And there is actually lots of evidence for the other uh, position. And we've actually talked about it on this show before. Um, about how when women think they're playing against men, like if it's anonymous, they perform worse than if they think they're playing against women. Uh, there's okay. there's uh, other evidence too, which is interesting. Um, so anyway, this international chess body has decided to ban trans women because, well, it can't be because they think the women's category is about combating misogyny and sexism and sexual assault and things in the game because trans women experience all of those things. So it must be the only other reason that they believe women are inherently inferior at chess. And I tweeted about this, and of course there were loads of, including chess nerds, but loads of just general uh, sexist dickheads showing up and being like, of course women are inferior at chess, what are you talking about? Um, so that was disgusting. But I don't know if you read the whole thing, Ben, but it's actually worse than this. So they've right. just said straight up, trans women cannot compete in women's leagues. But they also have said, if a player holds any of the women's title, but the gender has been changed to a man, so trans men, the women's titles are to be abolished. Those can be renewed if the person changes gender back to a woman and can prove ownership of the respective title. The abolished women's title will be transferred in general title of the same or lower level into a general title of the same or lower level. So basically, the taken titles, things you earn, like if you were a, a trans mm -hmm. man, but you played competitive chess at top level and you won an award in a mm -hmm. women's category, 
and then you transition. They are retroactively taking that award away from you. So, so I'm this... I'm curious. <laughs> I'm curious about this though. Like, okay, so so if if there's some biological reason why men are better at chess than women, um, and trans women cannot change any of these factors, but trans men can. What factors specifically <laughs> make men better at chess? Like, is it testosterone? Is it just testosterone? Because if that's the case, then trans women wouldn't be better at chess. Like, what what are they? I mean, I I guess it's my fault for trying to logic through their perspective when there is none. But it's, it's just it's just hilariously bad. Like, who? I mean, I, I can't even ask the question. Like, who would, who came up with this thing? Because we, uh, people do this shit. You know, but it's like, Christian if people, if people yeah. had like a single shred of logical reasoning, they would understand that this is ridiculous. Yeah, um, and this is like a prime example of as soon as like, as a a skeptic or just someone who likes to argue, you might feel like I need to steal my my pers my opponent's position and make sure I'm arguing against a good view because we want to meet on the battle place of the marketplace of ideas. But as soon as you do that, you're like having no respect for yourself, and and you're creating an argument they're not making. They're not they're not saying oh testosterone affects the performance. They're just saying trans people are disgusting and we need to get them out. Mm -hmm. Like that that's what this is. There's yeah. no logic behind this, which is kind of ironic given that chess is a purely <laughs> logic chess. game. But it, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it just shows how people can be switched on in one area of thought and completely ridiculous in another. Um, and yeah, it's just like totally nonsensical. There's there's just n absolutely nothing to this. And as soon as you try and find something there, there's just nothing there. Like they just uh, uh, and what what also what this does show is this kind of um, and I kind of want to address this because someone criticised me for this earlier, and I said I'd write an article, and I haven't bothered doing that yet. I I will do one day, but there's this amazing in the sense of it's hilariously bad. But a genuine real article by a gender critical professor from Australia called Holly Lawford Smith called uh it's something like the title is trans women aren't women but trans men are men and it basically makes the claim that all trans people are men uh and the <laughs> argument she uses i think we might have discussed this before but the argument she uses yeah. is all media is made for men so trans men have grown up watching media for men so they know what it's like to be a man so they can be a man but trans women have no idea it, it you know totally ridiculous right. argument but we see this general principle quite a lot from gender criticals. You also see it, like for, for example, Maya Forstater uh, has been saying quite a lot recently how uh, oh, she wants yeah. to ban trans women from women's toilets, but also wants to ban trans men from women's toilets. So mm -hmm. in that case, trans women are men and trans men are men too. Um, and it's actually kind of what we're seeing here as well of trans women are banned from the women's categories and trans men are also bad for the women's categories. So there's no, it doesn't seem consistent until you realize the vector in which they are applying this transphobia is treating women as inferior sort of subhumans, but also as this kind of purity test. And you see this a lot in mm -hmm. feminism um, when you're addressing these kind of misogynist positions. They often have this dichotomy and women who are like an object of desire, fall into this kind of pure, like fair, need defending, I'll do anything for you. You know, you're like the perfect object that I must have. And then when something goes wrong, like they have sex with someone else, or they've already had a child, or they get old, or they're ugly, or they're the wrong race or something, for the person who's doing this disgusting misogyny, suddenly they like don't even count as a human anymore. They're like, they're no longer a woman. Um, and this is kind of an extension of that. Trans women fail the purity test and trans men fail the purity test. And it's because it's these misogynistic, cis, straight men doing this kind of uh, mm -hmm. categorizing of people. So I said something like trans women are men, trans men are men is the principle that gender criticals hold to. And then some trans men rightly pointed out that actually gender criticals and 
the misogynists don't really see trans men as men. And that is true. Uh, they just see us as non-women. Always... non, non -women. Yeah. And, and whilst they are claim, whilst, you know, it's, it's the same with all transphobe positions, they'll make the claim sex is binary, but still they'll say trans people aren't real men and aren't real women. Like, they'll, mm -hmm. they'll, they'll say it's binary just because it's convenient to make the argument and it helps their ideology, but that isn't, that isn't how they treat the world. That isn't how, the, they do not mm -hmm. react to me like they react to a man, and they do not react to me like they react to a cis woman once they find out I'm trans. Um, and it's the same with trans men. So mm -hmm. it is a little complicated, but that's because they're contradictory bullshit worldviews. Like, um, well, yeah, but, their logic doesn't hold up if like, it's just mm. not internally consistent. They can't hold all yeah. their positions at the same time. And I think like, it, it's really hilarious to see them floundering around when you point out these things, because they really don't have any arguments to go to when you point that out. Like they, they just get caught in this contradictory circle. Yeah. I mean, it's it's kind of embarrassing watching the try. I had someone in my DMs mm -hmm. today earlier whose opening comment was X, Y equals man. Uh, and then, so I replied, obviously, with that paper of the X, Y cis woman who's given birth. <laughs> and then they were like, oh. what, just, just because some women are X, Y, does that m mean they're not women? And I was like, that's my argument. You're the one who came in saying X, Y equals man at me. And now you're saying this is a woman because presumably you don't think men can give birth. And they're like, but you think men can give birth. And I'm like, you just came in and said X, Y equals man. And I showed you this example. And then they went on some rant about how trans people are pedophiles. And like, you just keep bringing it back. But you said your opening comment was this and it was false. And they don't know what to do. They flounder around all over the place. And it's, because they hold contradictory views and it's it's kind of uncomfortable to do so. Yeah, real, real quick, I want I did want to address because yeah, you mentioned that. Um, I wanted to share a little bit of uh, gender critical word salad in one of my YouTube comments. Um, and this is hilarious. They I'm ready. say I'm ready. Chrom chromosome are not sexes, they are genes equal sexes and even if people are born intersex it still falls under male or female regardless of the rare condition see problem solved and i don't even know what <laughs> they even said like that's no. it's just word salad like chromosome are not sexes they are genes but then right after that like in the same sentence equal sexes so they're not sexes <laughs> they're genes but they're equal sexes I see the, the one of the amazing things about like arguing with gender critical so long is I know what a lot of them are trying to say and they've only heard it once or twice and they're misremembering it and they're just regurgitating some bullshit and they get one of the words wrong or they they flip around like a um a logical conclusion that they you know where they they just say something stupid or or they do something like that where it looks like a mess and to any like casual observer you just be like what the fuck is this mess i know what they're trying to say there is uh this argument that gender criticals have been using for ages which is um intersex people still fall into the binary no matter what condition they have mm -hmm. that is a fact and that proves the binary in fact and that is just a thing they say they won't be able to explain yeah. why or what causes mm -hmm. them to fall into the binary or who's defined it or what the decisions made were or why some intersex conditions have moved from being classified as one to another they they didn't have any of that because it's just a thing they regurgitate. But then you see another one of them, like five years later, trying to regurgitate that point and getting it wrong. And I feel like correcting them. I'm like, no, no, mate, you're obviously early in your gender critical career. If you want to go around abusing trans people, you need to get these lines down a bit better. Like, let me teach mm -hmm. them to you. <laughs> but Speaking like, of oh. these lines, I wonder if uh, we can oh. go through any of this logic with any of our callers today. Yeah, we have. <laughs> Let's, um, gosh, we've uh, had a few people drop off um please mm -hmm. do call in we now have a couple of spaces in the line um we are about to take start taking some calls right now so let's do it um let's talk to um how about five three let's do that one yeah so let's we're going to talk to jace in nm i'm sorry i don't know where nm is and you want to talk about detransitioners oh sorry i don't know all the states jace <laughs> go for it yeah you're yeah. on the line <laughs> It, it's cool. I don't remember any of the European countries. <laughs> <laughs> I'm from Even the UK. I okay, remember that school. one. <laughs> <laughs> um, so 
I heard a very concerning thing on the radio a few weeks ago. I don't remember the person's name, but they were, uh, it was like on conservative talk radio in the, in the local area or something. My, um, my boyfriend listens to all of the news to Mm -hmm. like just sometimes to get like a wider perspective and good on him like uh, and i just get it like secondhand smoke but there was just this terrible story um and this person is saying that they uh like that they felt gender dysphoria in their youth and that the like psychologist or whoever that they went to it was very quick and very fast and it it was like well you need to be on these hormone replacing drugs, lickety split, quick, fast, and in a hurry. And uh, they were using all sorts of like manipulative language with their parents. Like, uh, do you want a, like a dead uh, son or a, or an alive daughter uh, or, or vice versa? I don't remember which, Um, but uh like and they had like that person speaking on there i think like an audio clip from them uh right like i i don't remember their pronouns so i i just default yeah yeah <laughs> because like i mean i just don't i just don't want to disrespect anybody even if they are my enemy like yeah, i i want to sure. be above it like yeah um so i think so like it, yeah, it's sorry, just, it's just really concerning hearing hearing that type of thing on the radio, and I know that like tons of old people listen to the radio still, and like and sometimes that is their source of news and information and whatnot, and like and they're hearing this terrible story, which like I can't I can't even like assume it to be true, like with everything that I know about uh like trans health and everything in the world right. like i think um but they're saying that this happened a long time ago so i'm like i don't know like quite the efficacy of like if if it's a real story or not like i don't want to accuse anyone of lying if they're not lying like yeah so i think i think when approaching these things it's it's, impos- it's important to consider a few things and the first thing is there absolutely are detransitioners who uh, thought that transition would be good for them and transitioned and then found out it was really bad for them and then detransitioned and they regret it. That There are people who that is definitely true for. Um, and some of those people likely got bad advice at some point in their transition because I think most trans people get bad advice at some point in their transition. Although um, the medical system in general around the world is getting slightly better for trans people in a lot of respects and there's more knowledge and uh, there's more advice outside of just sort of the medical sphere like you can see people on YouTube talking about things and and talk to real trans people and stuff on the internet it's still pretty bad and there's still a lot of information and in certain places there is still you know the state blocks it from being taught in schools and all this kind of stuff so lots of people seek out their own information and not everyone is so good at determine, uh, de- detecting misinformation. Um, and there are some people who just give bad advice. And there are a lot of doctors who either don't know, don't care or dislike trans people who you know, mm-hmm. purposely give bad advice. And certainly one of the things that causes people to make bad decisions is if you come up against a doctor who's really trying to hold you back and doesn't like mm-hmm. trans people, then you might start looking for ways around that and just lying to them. And then they're not going to care because they're not trying to diagnose you. They're just trying to stop you. And then you don't care about what they're saying because you don't trust them. And um, anyway, you, you absolutely do get detrans people like that. And I think when you meet a new detransition person or detrans person or however they want to describe themselves, it's important to not instantly doubt everything they're saying because there could easily be some people who have had bullshit situations and um you know there are some detrans people who i know who aren't opposed to trans rights or even actively pro trans rights who had a very bad experience with trans healthcare and like i had a bad experience with trans healthcare too so 
I, you know, I, I empathize with them and we're in the same boat in that respect. Equally, another important thing to remember is there is an international, very well-funded and powerful and vocal anti-trans lobby who is doing its utmost best to completely eradicate trans people from existence. And that sounds like quite a claim, but it's just observably true. Um, there are lots of people saying it out loud. There are lots of people talking out loud about the best strategies to do it. Um, but one of the things they've sort of glommed onto is the idea of a trans person, usually a, oh, sorry, a detrans person, usually a detrans woman, um, who, you know, regrets their transition. And they want to kind of hold this up and say, this is the horror of transition, and this is why we need to ban it. This is why we need to ban it for under 18s. This is why we need to ban it for under 25s. This is why we need to ban it full stop, because it is ruining people's lives. And that is the, the like proper a propaganda angle they're going for. And they will just make this stuff up if, you know, it, not, not the detrans people involved necessarily, but like uh, anti trans campaigners will just wholesale make up any old bullshit they like. They'll, they'll make up that some serial killer is trans. They'll make up that, you know, they'll make up absolutely anything. And they will make up the idea of these kind of, this wave of onslaught of uh, D-trans, poor young girls who were tricked into transition by the evil trans lobby. Um, but if they can find someone who will fill that role for them, they will push them right to the front and center of the movement. They'll give them, you know, masses of support and money and time and, because they're a very valuable asset in uh, anti-trans propaganda sort of circuit. And I guess the oh, last absolutely. thing to point out is, the last thing to point out, so sorry to cut you off there, the last thing to point out is there were, there were lots of reasons to detransition. There are some people who detransition because they truly regret transition and it was a bad idea. Uh, they aren't the majority though. The majority of people who detransition um, actually do so because of transphobia, finding it hard to, uh, get a job, you know, losing their house, losing their family, this kind of stuff, and often go on to retransition. And a, an example of this, and I'm only bringing this up because she brings it all the time. One of our other hosts on the show, Arden, um, she, you know, experienced yeah, this. Yeah, Arden was several talking about that uh, a little bit ago. Yeah, I think for sure. And there, there I was are a few the other show reasons. Whenever she referenced it. Yeah. And there are a few other reasons, like for example, medical regret, or uh, sorry, medical problems, or um, you know, lack of money, and, and these other things. But one of the reasons is political, um, and you see this with the ex-gay movement. And they are people who think they are cured of their gayness by praying or by becoming a conservative or whatever. And they are often very or by vocal uh, and a secret a secret group of. A secret group of men taking them to a retreat, like after they were discovered <laughs> uh, having having sex with uh, with gay sex workers off of Craigslist and smoking meth. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, it's that kind of thing. It's very suspicious. But um, so you also get these ex-trans people, and uh, I actually know someone who is um, ex ex-trans. So they are sort of like ex detrans, um, but were politically detransitioned. Um, and as part of basically, they got into gender critical ideology and then believed the idea that being trans wasn't a real thing. And that it was just social pressure and they had been tricked into transitioning by the evil trans lobby. And so they detransitioned and then their gender dysphoria came back, but they just thought, well, I'm just not like, you know, praying hard enough. I'm not believing hard enough in the ideology. I'm still susceptible to the trans lobby and did like this fake it kind of thing. You, yeah. And, and they just keep going and going and then basically broke and realized that they are still trans and there's nothing they can do about it. But that, that kind of cycle takes years. And there are amongst the vocal detransitioners, there are some people who truly regret and who are just telling their story. There are some people who truly regret and are embellishing their story because they're very much encouraged to do so by the anti-trans dickheads around them. And there are some trans people who have detransitioned because they think being trans is bad because they bought into anti-trans bullshit and they're doing it to validate themselves, justify their own decisions. Um, in fact, one of the most famous uh, 
detrans activists from before the sort of current trans panic, just at the start of it. Um, I might get their name wrong, but I think it's Jamie Shoup. Um, but uh, was a trans woman who detransitioned, and at the time I came out, was like a detrans activist. And I remember my mum finding this story online and worrying that that would be me. And they've retransitioned, and they spent like five years in in the like the heart of the anti-trans movement, advocating against trans people's rights. So, yeah. I've explained a lot of stuff there. I don't know, Ben, do you have anything to add? Yeah. 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 I mean, I want to weigh in a little bit uh, from a different angle because of the fact that I'm a physician and like, right. I, I think the way this discussion is going on, like there's, there's definitely two sides of this. And I think we need to approach it differently depending on what side we're coming from. There's like the, the side from lay people who are, basically like needing to uh, debunk misinformation and make sure that, you know, people aren't using detransition as a reason to ban trans people just in general. And like, there's that whole fight going on. Um, and then from the physician side, like we have a little bit of, of a nuanced conversation regarding like, what should we do because because we we understand that there is risk of detransition like there there's risk for that with any medical procedure and so the debate comes in with anything it's like is is the benefit of starting somebody on medical treatment a, like is it are the benefits worth the the risks and you, it takes often takes years to figure out where the lines are like how do we appropriately diagnose this which like i kind of hate the word diagnose in terms of trans people yeah. because it's not it's not a disease but like the point is we have to have enough sensitivity to capture all of the people who would benefit from this medical therapy or surgical therapy um and then also rule out anybody that would not benefit so we're we're playing a sensitivity specificity game of like how do we determine who is appropriate for this treatment and try to minimize the amount of people that are going to regret transition or or detransition so um it's very difficult especially regarding more subjective uh things like like gender identity ends up being a subjective thing like how do you objectively prove somebody's gender identity you you can't do that um, it's, it's very different than right. like, if, if you were to say, um, I have my foot that was torn off and it's on the other side of the room, like that's an objective finding, right? Like I don't need a lot of testing to say, yeah, this person's foot is over there and we need to put it back on or we need to do something. But, um, we, we do see this too with things like subjective pain, um, namely like talking about chest pain in, uh, cis men versus cis women, um, and how there's the diagnostic criteria, like when do we start uh, a chest pain workup on these people, knowing that typical chest pain is only referring to males who present with those symptoms and, and not typical typical female presentation, which is different in the way it presents. And, and so that debate is still going mm -hmm. on even with regard to things like heart attacks. Um, so taking into account that there is like even higher levels of nuance for something as subjective as gender identity and knowing that it's going to probably be a while before we can appropriately kind of figure out what criteria are we using to start somebody on a therapy versus what criteria would we use to say maybe this person isn't appropriate to be getting this right now and like from a layperson side like that's not where a lot of the conversation needs to go. Like, I, I think a lot of this is kind of balancing out these two perspectives and saying like, okay, from the, the lay person side, like the whole point is like these criteria or whatever that we're saying should not be metrics to deny trans people humanity or deny trans people's access to services, uh, access to sports, access to et cetera. Like that, those should not be intertwined. But do I think that we maybe need some some more precision uh, in our use of medical therapies and and try to um, 
not give these to people who wouldn't benefit from them. Sure, I think there's more work that can be done on that. Maybe we can come up with better screening tools. Maybe we can, like, because I mean, uh, there was another issue too that happened recently where I know um, someone from the Daily Mail had gone to uh, a physician and was saying all of the things that would get you like gender affirming care. Like they had said, I'm having gender dysphoria for this long. And, and like, yeah, if you lie about your, your presentation to somebody and you meet those criteria now, like they had met some of the older WPATH criteria of like, you have to be experiencing this for greater than six months or something. Like they had said they had, had dysphoria for two years and like they had said all of the right things. Um, and it was a weird thing on the internet of like, yeah, um, it's it's like you went to a doctor and said, I'm having chest pain that radiates to my shoulder and my jaw and it feels like pressure and I'm also in my 40s, etc. Like if you say those things, you're getting a chest pain workup. You're going to be... Uh, like tested for a heart attack it's like it's kind of the same thing like if you lie about things and you say things that would meet criteria yeah of course you're going to meet criteria and you're going to be further evaluated so i guess like that's where i'm coming from is, is like i th and i think too with the people on the radio and stuff like katie was saying like they're they're probably like there's some possibility for embellishment and there is some possibility for like some missing context like because i know a lot of times when when gender criticals will talk about these issues, there there's a lot of context missing, um, and and it's important maybe to tease that out. But I th I think that's kind of that's kind of the nuance of this issue for me. And maybe there's there's too much overlap in in lay people trying to get into the nitty gritty of the the medical side and applying that nitty gritty to non medical related things. And maybe that was just a lot of word salad. I'm very tired, but that's. <laughs> <laughs> kind of my Did either of us help at all, James? No, no, it, like, no it, it, was, uh, it was really good. It was really good, I think. Uh, like, the situation that, uh, that you described, Dr. Ben, just seems like saying, like, oh, well, I, I use these cheat codes, and then I beat the game. Like, I beat the game legitimately, correct? No. Like, <laughs> that, that doesn't seem right. That doesn't seem right. Yeah. So, yeah, so can we do something uh, better to to kind of make that less of a possibility? And I'm thinking right. maybe it's worth putting um, research into it. So, yeah, absolutely. Uh, speaking to uh, Katie's point earlier, uh, and like a uh, point at large uh, from the from the like from the poll, uh, I had a discussion with uh, Forrest Valkai on on a different show uh, about uh, something kind of parallel to this, which is like how women are treated in video games. Like, and where, right. like, if you have a female sounding voice, then you are treated much worse than if you have a more male sounding voice. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, or other specific stereotypical, like, things or whatever. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. I'm sure like I'm sure like a racist wouldn't treat someone who they think sounded of an ethnicity that they don't like uh any better than like and if they're a racist, they're probably a misogynist. Like yeah. <laughs> six of one, half dozen of the other. So yeah. like <laughs> so uh like I think uh I think a lot more uh work does need to be done and like about the chess thing i would think that women would be better at chess or like female brains because like i hear that female brains have more connective tissue between both sides of the brain than like than stereotypical male brains do i don't like, really accept so I the difference that between male and female be brains better. I, I like, don't accept yeah, the difference between male and female brains. I'm not convinced that men and women yeah. would be better or worse than chess. But I see what you're saying. Like you, you could make this. You could make some kind of weak biological based argument for either of them. But there's no actual real like, uh, what's the word? Evidence, empirical evidence. And it's the same with this detransition thing. Like this, this issue is that most people are not rational. If you gave them a statistic that says. 99.5% of all people who transitions lives are better because of it. I mean, sure, if if you're ready to hit the numbers and accept the facts, then 
you will just accept it. But most people aren't, and most people don't care about facts. Most people just want emotions. And if you are someone who already is prone to disliking trans people, and you see a young lady up on stage crying, saying that the trans lobby ruined her life, you will feel angry, and that is it. And that that's that's why they do it. And you say, like, they're showing this radio to old people and you know, conservatives and stuff. That's who they're targeting. That's who they want to motivate. And it's not just, I want to eradicate trans people, so I'm going to try and motivate the conservatives who are most likely to be opposed to trans people. Lots of it is the other way around too. Lots of the big political parties have like openly just said, for example, the conservatives in the UK, are just like, well, we're not going to win the election any other way. So how we're going to win the election is fanning the flames of the, the culture wars. Um, and trying to get people angry about trans people. I mean, that's that's literally the strategy for the next election, and I'm sure the Republicans are doing it too. And so that's why. Oh, I'm sure. You know, if you're if you're willing to go on all of these conservative platforms and and tell your story or tell a exaggerated story or just tell a completely made up story or some political viewpoint that you believe to be true, even if it doesn't match your actual experience, then they'll pay you to do it, and it will go well for you and you'll get lots of support and stuff, at least in the short term. So, um, yeah, grim stuff. But anyway, uh, we might move on as we have some other callers, but um, I guess, yeah, thanks for your call. Uh, it's it's a very interesting topic and, uh, yeah, thanks for your input. Um, hopefully hear from you again. Thank you so much for taking my call. That's all right. Uh, see you around. Bye. Um, so this, uh, we still have quite a few callers. We still have a little bit of space, but I think this is like the most dropped callers I've seen. I wonder if there was like a, a problem on the end. I think yeah. it's fine at our end, but um, we've had some good good calls uh, here. So like some topics, if any of these people want to call back or someone else wants to call back with these topics, we've got penis is the source of all evil. That's, that's quite a funny one I wanted to talk about. Um, <laughs> why do liberal brains break over transgender people? That's That's a pretty good one. Um, someone <laughs> wanted to talk about Miss Andre. I could rant off on that. Um, and uh, there was another good one here, I think. I don't know, maybe, but we had some, we had some good topics. But anyway, let's move on uh, to another caller. Ben, do you have a preference, or shall I pick one? Maybe nine five. You can pick one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. We're, we're going to talk to good one Jack there. in Essex. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, but we had we had some good topics. Oh, but anyway, let's Jack, move you need on. to mute the show uh, in the background, please. Jack, Hang on, I'm get Jack. You're listening to the show in the background. Please, can you mute the show and uh, then we can start the call? Okay, I'm gonna unmute Nia now, and hopefully you've muted us. Yeah, we had some good topics. Oh, but anyway, let's Jack, move you on. Need to mute the show. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, Jack, we're going to return you to the queue. <laughs> uh, if you're still got us on in the background in the next next time I try it. So, last try. Jack, are you there? Can you mute? Can you pause the YouTube video? Right, you are now muted. Oh, hello? Jack. Hello, Jack. You're... Hello, hey. Jack from oh, Desk hi, UK. Sorry. You are on sorry, the I'm line. On you are on. Okay, brilliant. I can... Sorry, I can hear you guys. I have the wrong tab muted. Um... Okay. <laughs> So, what a day. Um, yeah, so um, basically, to be honest, this, um, sorry for context, I'm the guy that called in like a few weeks ago to talk about um, TERFs and autism. Um, oh, yeah. And I kind of got thinking about sort of how, um, sort of, I guess in a similar way to how gender critical um, ideology kind of takes jabs at other groups. And um, it got me thinking like, you know, the way they say like, I mean, the, the common one I see on Twitter is, oh, you know, we have no issue with the uh, quote unquote genuine transsexuals. Yeah. Um, and, you know, um, fuck, how do I put this? Um, so, you know, but then the way they talk about transgender people, like, you know, you hear things like, um, you know, they'll refer to, um, is it called, is it a neo vagina, technically, what they, call it um you, you, you could know, call it that if you to, wanted yeah um you know like they'll refer to that as like a rot pocket um which i think is disgusting um yeah and yeah. you know it's for for a group that's saying you know we don't mind this genuine group they're using language that kind of hurts that group as well 
Oh yeah, they oh, yeah. they um, don't give a fuck. Uh, like, it, sorry, I'm just going to meet you just because I can hear myself echoing back. Um, they they say, oh, we we don't we don't hate trans people. We, don't, we just hate TRAs. We support real transsexuals. They like that is a classic gender critical line, yeah. and it's absolute bullshit. Like, the the reason they say it is because, firstly, to passers by, they want to seem not bigoted. If you just straight up say, I oppose all trans people, I mean, lots of them will say that, but the more moderate ones or the ones who want to seem more moderate won't say that because to passers by, they'll just look bigoted. So they want to say, oh, no, I don't have an issue of trans people. It's just the crazy TRAs. And that, they hope, makes them look more reasonable, but it also convinces themselves. I know that lots of them see themselves as reasonable people. So if they tell themselves, oh, no, no, I support I support real trans people. Things have changed. The reason I'm suddenly in a rage about trans people is because everything's different now. And back in the day, there used to be real transsexuals, and I supported them. But I don't support the, the other type, this new type. And it's total bullshit because um, if you ask them what the criteria are. Um, they will often say things that either apply to all trans people or create a such a small group that it's effectively no one. And usually they will change it. I mean, often they will start off with kind of a trans med position where they'll be like, oh, I support real transsexuals as in someone who surgically and uh, hormonally transitions and, you know, tries to fit into society and stuff. And then I say, yeah, but i done all of that and you hate me. And they'll be like, oh, yes, but and then I'll make up some new excuse. Like, I also don't support people who are tall or something. You know, I've, I've had quite a few of them actually say that to me. Um, but th the point is that they don't really support any trans people, not even real transsexuals, whatever that is. Um, but also you can just see it in the things they're campaigning for. They'll say, I support all real transsexuals. And they're like, even J.K. Rowling says this. Loads of the prominent gender critical people say this, and you're like, "But you do want to ban all trans people from the spaces they used today, don't you?" And they're like, "Yeah, but, 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 but I support real trans." No, 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 no. <laughs> Just tell me what you want for real for your these real transsexuals you claim to support. Like, I actually had a, a argument with um, Dr. Kathleen Stock uh, on air, which is on my YouTube channel if you want to go listen to oh, it. Well, wow. where she did this and. Um, I said to her, like, I think Dr. Stock is an extremist because she wants to take all the rights away from every trans person in the country. And she was like, that's not true. I just want to ban men who ID as women who have beards and wear a dress or whatever. And I was like, no, but you've signed a declaration saying to ban all trans people. She's like, I don't have any problems of real transsexuals. I just, and I'm like, but you do want to ban all trans people, right? Or all trans women from women's spaces without exception. And she's like, well, yes, but and like, what's, so what are you talking about then? It's just propaganda. It's just a front that you use because one, you're too much of a fucking coward to say your real position because you know that people will judge you for it. And two, you're a delusional dickhead who thinks they're a nice person when they're not. Um, so yeah, they, they do this kind of bullshit all the time. Ben, have you encountered it before? Uh, are you yeah. a real transsexual? Oh, <laughs> yeah, no, this this is one I, I come across frequently with uh, everybody's favorite trans man, Buck Angel, who um, oh, yeah, he, he's, loves he loves this phrase. And like, this is something that I, I see with with him trying to basically be like, it's the I'm one of the good ones thing of like, but, no, but I'm. Yeah, Buck <laughs> Angel's not even a real transsexual because he's not had genital surgery. So therefore, he's a yeah. trans render poser like mm -hmm. uh wait what's the, what's the agp but in the other direction uh f g p no <laughs> f a p a a p that's it and not an f a p yeah God. It, anyway sorry about it, it, <laughs> no it's just it's just so funny because like there have been posts of him that i've i've um commented on uh hit him saying that like he supports like real transsexuals who have gone to the correct therapist. So the ones that support conversion therapy. Yeah. Um, and it's like, it's, it's not logically coherent at all. Um, but yeah, like I, I see this as 
like what Katie was just saying, but also with some of those pick me trans people who just want to be on that side of things, want to be seen as one of the good ones. But then it's just odd to me. They, they don't understand that like their, their lives are on the line too. Like their access to hormones are on the line. Like Buck Angel still is going to need testosterone for the rest of his life. Like, and people that are are saying that, oh, well, we we care about the trans, the real transsexuals. No, they want your hormones gone too. Like as soon as they get rid of the TRAs, like they're coming after you. Like none of you are safe in this. And I yeah, I think that's where I've mostly seen that debate. And it's just absolutely stupid. Like I know that there are some people out there that are trying to reclaim the the word transsexual and like it's not necessarily for me to say no you can't you can't do that you can't reclaim that word but just for me personally every time i see the the word transsexual it's in the context of i'm not one of these transgenders i'm a transsexual i'm better than them they shouldn't exist like i usually see transsexual used in a derogatory way and I so I'm not a huge fan of trying to take the word back necessarily, but I I do know that there's that debate so, going on too. A point that I saw today, uh, which I hadn't actually really considered before, um, from one of these like true transsexual elitist people who's desperate for attention from the transphobes, which is the reason they do it, by the way, is because they get some respite from the transphobia because then all the transphobes like prop them up as an example mm -hmm. of, um how trans people should be even though they still want to take away their rights they were like how does it feel like can can you imagine being a part of my, a minority when you type in the name from your minority into google and all of the top hits are porn and that's true i think for the word transsexual but not for the word transgender well i mean actually i haven't typed that in i should uh, no, I'm not going to do it to find out. I, I'm taking the word for it. I, <laughs> I'm taking the word of a true trans, transsexual pick me. Uh, I can see that being true anyway. Um, yeah, I guess that's an argument against word transsexual. I don't know. Maybe we can get into that. Uh, I don't know. Maybe uh, let's let's bring Jack back. Sorry that I had to mute you because I, we could hear ourselves echoing back. But Jack, what do you think to that? Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, so no, I completely agree. And to be honest... Uh... Oh, I'm really sorry. I clicked your mute button again. Uh, one second. Sorry, start again. <laughs> oh, sorry. Um, yeah, no, um, I completely agree. And look, uh, it's funny that um, Ben sort of mentioned the pick me angle because, um, you know, I, I, it was literally like this week or last week, um, the group Gays Against Groovers, um, who, mm. you know, I cannot go over the fact that they're in a, like their acronym is GAG. Um, but they, <laughs> it's they like put a our hippie yeah. on. Yeah, like literally. And they put out a hit piece on um, Caitlyn Jenner. And it's like, hang on, this is like one of your biggest like proponents. Like, you know, she, she sort of towed that line of like, you know, us genuine lot need to take a stand against these, you know, horrible TRAs. Um, but obviously, like, you know, most of us know that this is because, you know, gay against groomers are effectively just a political front for the MAGA crowd. Uh, yeah. Sorry, not the mag crowd. Um, I think they, I think they're more DeSantis now. Like, yeah, probably. Like you he's have more that bit in the Republican yeah. Party. I think um, that what's important when you see Caitlyn Jenner and Gays Against Groomers attacking to each other, like this, this thing where where they create this arbitrary divide and they put themselves on one side and everyone else on the other, and they're like, I'm one of the good ones, everyone else is one of the bad ones. They'll have allies in that. You know, there'll be a uh, an anti-LGBT trans person, anti-LGBT lesbian, anti-LGBT gay man, you know. They will team up for the sake of dunking on these other disgusting queers or whatever, in their view. But then they'll do it to each other as well. And they will just keep going until they are the only one, the only true transsexual, the only true LGBT person. And like, you know, Caitlyn Jenner and Gays Against Grimmers will team up for the validation when they were, you know, attacking like someone like me, for example. Um, but they, you know, it's the second they don't have a common enemy, <clears throat> they'll attack each other. And that, that will just keep going until there's only one of them left. And then it's Ernest Rom, and then they... They get sorted out too, so yeah, grim. Yeah, I mean, um, 
I, I guess um, um, cause I feel like, I feel like cause, um, the reason I put the uh, sort of two topics together was because I do feel like the transsexual versus transgender and the trans woman versus man kind of arguments tying together. Like you see, um, you see a lot with um, trans women. You know, it's always always played as um, like oh, you know, um, AGP males. Um, you know, trying to like, you know, go into the women's bathroom and all of this. Um, but then they, they always kind of forget that actually like trans men, like trans men kind of counteract that argument that transition is sort of vanity based. Yeah. Um, I mean, I mean, cause I'll, I'll be honest. Um, I don't like this. You see, this is one of the things, like I don't overly understand what it means to be transgender, but I can see that trans people are, you know, people who are trying to live their best life. And you're not harming anyone, so why is that an issue? Um, I, I guess I'm kind of curious, like, fuck, I've, to be honest, I actually forgot, like, what point I was going with this. <laughs> um, it, it's it's about... all right, you know, sometimes it's good to have um, a rant. I think we're all fairly tired here. Um, I yeah. guess... Um, <laughs> yeah, it's fine. I know that um, sometimes in the gender critical world, uh, the poor young girls are being tricked by some evil lobby into cutting their breasts off and becoming sexually unavailable to the, you know, the men and um, ruining their lives and they need, must be protected. And the reason they're doing that is because being a woman is hard and they're being scared away from it by... I mean, some of them will say misogyny, even if they are themselves misogynists. But you know, the the, the steel man gender critical position is that um, sexism contributes to the reason why trans men want to transition. But like you say, that doesn't make any sense when it comes to trans women. So then they come up with a completely new motivation, which is trans women are perverts and are obsessed with sex, and uh, you know they want just to use it as an excuse to have sex with women or whatever or to you know watch women go to the toilet I, I don't know but um then that it still doesn't quite make sense because a lot of trans women aren't attracted to women so then they have to come up with a new motivation which is where you're so gay and you see it that the best way of attracting men is to transition into a woman which just uh, i Anyway, but then you end up with the, all these multiple separate motivations, which all just happen to coalesce into the same thing and is much more easily explained with the stuff that actually matches the evidence. But, I mean, they end up coming up with this nonsense and that aids them in sort of pitting groups against each other. And some people do kind of buy into this, like Ben mentioned, Buck Angel, who it probably is one of the most desperate for validation people I've ever encountered. But oh, he absolutely. Is, he is so cringe, but he will, um, you know, go out of his way to shit on every other trans person just so that some transphobic mm -hmm. person will say that he's not so bad. Um, but you do sometimes kind of see this trans men versus trans women argument trying to be stirred up by the gender criticals, um, mm -hmm. which is basically why I hate Ben. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, but no, it's no. a little bullshit. <laughs> uh, but anyway. <laughs> So go on. Oh, sorry. No, I was just going to say, like, you know, um, I, as far as I know, Ben is in a guitarist, so, like, he's not in the cool kids club. Like, you know, sorry, Ben. <laughs> Saxophonist. Sa saxophonist, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say, I want to call myself a saxophonist. That's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> what was the word? What's the proper word? Sax blower. Saxophonist. A blower? Oh, saxophonist. <laughs> no, saxophonist. Come um, on. <laughs> A, a uh, no, my phone. my hands. Kate has seen my the size of my hands. My hands are too small to really be good at guitar unless I had a kid's size, and I'm not about to do that. So, um, yeah, I wish I could play guitar. I, I, it's not. I am not built for that. Unfortunately, that's uh, fair enough. I mean, you know, not, none of us are bass players, so like we're all winning. <laughs> I think Katie can play bass though. <laughs> Don't help me. <laughs> Every transformer <laughs> can play bass. <laughs> oh, Katie, I think you're getting attacked right now. 
<laughs> um, right, before we get on to the uh, hidden agenda, which is trans women and bassists and how the Venn diagram is nearing on a circle, <laughs> um, we're going to say goodbye, Jack. Thanks for your call. Um, it was a really good topic, and hopefully we'll hear again from you in the future, and we will take another caller. Um, okay, lovely. Oh, sorry, sorry, Jack. I, I, I had bad control. <laughs> George, did I cut you off in, it's, in it's the middle the of your It's the bass player sentence. in Katie that just possessed her and was like, no, yeah, leave. Fuck you, Jack. <laughs> There's a war in Katie's brain, and it's like the Jedi versus the Sith, but it's <laughs> the Sith is actually a bass player. <laughs> what? <laughs> and it just took over your brain. You went to the dark side and were like, no. Uh, I mean, I guess so. Like, I could see that. Um, just looking at what the date is today, it's the 17th, which I should have said at the start of the mm -hmm. show. Jimmy, you can edit me in. Today is the 17th of the 8th of 2023. Um, and I was looking ahead because there are some amazing shows coming up on this channel. We don't just do trans rights here. We also do atheism and then pretty much nothing else. No, we, we do loads of stuff. It's a skeptic channel and we have loads of cool shows. And uh, we've got a lot of cool stuff coming up, which is why you should subscribe to this channel. So on Sunday, you could be here uh, and Jimmy is on and he is joined by Derek Mythvision um, for the Sunday show. And then on Monday, we've got Skept Talk with Shannon Q. I don't know if she has a guest. There's not one written in here. So maybe it's just solo Shannon and you can all just call in and tell her that she smells. And then on Tuesday, we have actually you've got to call Shannon uh, Hater on a Grater. Uh, that's her new name. <laughs> Um, uh, on Tuesday, we have Dying It Loud with Dave Warnock and Footless Joe. And then on Wednesday, we have The Hang Up with Matt and Jimmy. And then lastly and bestly, we have this show again next week. And we are going to have the uh, absolutely rancid Arden Hart and the absolutely horrible Dr. Ben. And it will be the, probably the worst show of the week uh because of the hosts <laughs> yeah because katie is not on it and i will once again be zombie ben very tired from <laughs> night shift zombie no but ben. you should you should seriously watch next week uh because it's very rare that we get to uh have a show just without katie's presence and you know sometimes you just need a break from the britishness of it all um <laughs> <laughs> you need to break Which, from the uh, anyway <laughs> well i mean i know it's something something with that i was i told katie recently that um like so I, I did have a trivia show last last week i think and like there was a site i was using to help generate trivia questions and it must have been a uk website because they had a category for world trivia and anytime i would generate a new question it was a uk question i was like of course because your world is just you and uh the rest of it doesn't <laughs> exist <laughs> absolutely um I was going to try and do a segue here, but I haven't got a segue. I would like to talk to 18.6, which is... Would you like 18.6? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. let's do it. Yeah. We're going to talk to Julie in MA, Massachusetts. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> is that my message? Amazing. You got it right. You did it. Julie, you want to talk about liberals' brains breaking and maybe Richard Dawkins? <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. So let me, let me explain the... Um the way I phrased it. I was talking to a friend of mine yesterday and I was telling him about like all the appalling stuff Richard Dawkins has said lately. And he said, what is it about this particular issue that makes otherwise liberal people's brains break? It's like so many of the people who buy into the conspiracy theories about, you know, teachers grooming or, or those poor innocent little girls and, and all the, all the horseshit that Abigail Schreier spat out, like a lot of them are otherwise liberal people. And, and like, as your last caller pointed out, you know, some of them are trans like Buck Angel. And I just want to know how can, I mean, I, I, I think it's, I mean, I suspect it's gotta be more complex than like, well, Richard Dawkins or whoever else is saying this, they just deep down don't like trans people. I mean, I feel like it's gotta be more complex than that. I just want to know how, how is it that so many of them can, can just believe this and I also want to know, like, you know, to play devil's advocate, how do I know I'm not just, like, cherry-picking data and having my view reinforced when, when I say, no, these people are wrong, they're not getting the correct information? Because I feel like no matter what, when you argue with someone about it, they'll, like, point to some study 
or, or if you point them to a study, they'll be like, well, we'll look at that sample size. I mean, it, it's just endless. And yeah, so right. a lot of stuff. Ben, do you have a thought here first, or should I go first? Uh, I mean, I got thoughts. I mean, I mean, with Richard Dawkins himself, I mean, I hate that we're still talking about the man. Um, but I mean, with him, it just seems like there's an ego thing at play and like wanting wanting to have attention on him as like, I, I think while there's still a lot of debate going on in certain circles about evolution and all that, it, it's definitely not as relevant of a conversation as it used to be. And uh, I think maybe part of it is Richard Dawkins wants some attention, but also uh, he wants to believe that he's right about everything. Um, and I think maybe he had, I, I think part of it is that he had a, a very strong opinion. Like he said that initial tweet like a, a few years ago or wh whatever that kind of outed him as a transphobe but then he's even if and i'm not saying that he he like i think there's part of him that like knows that what he's saying is not logically consistent uh, and that he's had to deal with that but i i wonder if he's too far into being committed to what he said that he's he just needs to continue being right about it and there's so much ego there with him that he just refuses to admit that he was potentially wrong about something and is just like buckled down on it and i, I don't know if that's correct but like it's hard for me to believe that he hasn't had any cognitive dissonance related to this and that he hasn't had to address that for himself um and I mean, for sure, there are plenty of smart people that have very bad ideas. And so it is possible that he is just refusing to address this particular issue for himself. Um, but I, I do think it'd be very difficult as an evolutionary biologist to not understand that there's nuance to this conversation. Um, so I think like part of it is like, part of its ego and part of it is, is just like not, intentionally not engaging with it despite it being logically inconsistent i don't know if i made any sense in anything i just said <laughs> no no I, I i mean i mean i get right. i get what you're saying like like it's it you know and it pains me to say a lot of this because I've, i have had contact with richard dawkins in the past i met him at several book signings we we've exchanged emails you know he was you know really nice guy um but well, of course, we also haven't. He also hasn't responded to my emails in years, so I don't know. Maybe you're right. Maybe it's an ego thing, and like I, I don't know. Maybe he thought I was giving him some kind of attention that I wasn't intending. I don't know. But it, yeah. I, think, I mean, um, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. One, one of the yeah, um, but. Sorry, I'm going in. I'm going for it. One of the things, like, I totally agree with this. Why does this break liberals' brains so much? And there are definitely some people who, I mean, yeah, there are definitely some people who have gone from they probably either voted left wing or didn't vote to like hardcore right wing people now over this one issue, or at least been inspired to do so with this issue as the catalyst. Um, and I think that there's a few factors here. One of them is just the kind of general, as the world changes, society progresses, and some people who are back in their day, in their heyday of being able to learn and understand, uh, were progressive, stopped growing with society, and then suddenly they find that society has moved on without them, and they are scared and angry and upset about it. And so they make a lot of noise about it. And I think that's why we see, I mean, one of the, there's lots of sort of big divides between the anti-trans people and trans people. And one of them is, is it's quite generational. Um, you know, trans people are much more likely to be, I would, I would guess the average age of um, people arguing for trans rights is like two decades younger than for the people arguing against them. Um, the anti-trans people really find it hard to recruit younger people and, we find it hard to recruit people in power who are generally the older people. So um, that is one thing. And also then there is like the rise of the far right uh, has come back in the last you know decade or so. And patriarchy in general is always trying to force people into boxes and trans people are particularly progressive. I mean, we had a very liberal acceptance of 
Um, and here I'm using kind of liberal as a slur. We had a very kind of liberalism acceptance of gay people in that they can now do the same things as straight people as in get married, but that's it. And you've got to kind of just fit into a heteronormative society and not make a big deal about it. And pride is still transgressive and they're still offended by gay men kissing in front of children in the way that they wouldn't be about straight people kissing in front of children, um, like on TV and stuff. So, and trans people break those rules a lot more um, because they're not just saying, oh, you know that thing that everyone else does, these people just want to do it, but different. We're like, all the rules are fucking bullshit. Um, so that that's very scary and stressful to anyone who kind of leans on patriarchy as part of their ideology, which is religious people a lot of the time, but not exclusively. Um, but also I think that COVID has probably greatly contributed to this. Um, we've seen a lot of people go into conspiracy theory wormholes from lockdown and COVID, not not from the disease itself, and not even necessarily from the COVID conspiracy. But you know, a lot of the world was changed a lot. It was very scary. Lots of people lost their jobs. There was a lot of economic anxiety. A lot of people were locked on their own for a long time, or locked in with their abuser for a long time. Um, it was a huge event in pretty much everyone alive today's lives. And and it it has broken a lot of people's brains. And sure, lots of people have got into transphobia, but other people have got into, you know, all kinds of other nonsense, anti-immigrant stuff or QAnon or, or anti-vaccine stuff. I was just watching a video about how Tucker Carlson is going on some UFO conspiracy theory arc recently. <laughs> um, and, 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 and that's true. But I guess one thing I'll say on the Richard Dawkins thing is, he is not a liberal who has had his brain broken by trans people. He is a conservative right-wing man who doesn't like religion, who has recently discovered the trans wars. <laughs> He's been writing conservative bullshit points and arguing against, you know, sort of progressive stuff for a long time. Um, I remember he wrote some uh we're both british so i'm going to just be careful about the words i say uh he wrote this letter called dear muslima or something about a muslim yeah, woman yeah i know that he, he was he was he, yeah it was very out that was way out of line i mean he really fell down on that one that i mean i but the thing is even even back even back when i used to email with him i i had no trouble saying yeah he was way out of line on that but the thing is he was out of line as in, he said he did something bullshit, but that wasn't like it just came out of nowhere. And mm -hmm. wow, this is so weird. This doesn't fit with any of your other beliefs or anything. That was just, oh, suddenly he's, you've realized who he is and who he's always been, or at least he's been in his recent life at that time. This is just an extension of that. Like it's, it's similar to lots of the kind of um, intellectual dark web, like uh, four horsemen kind of, big thinkers, th th that kind of uh, era of the, the sort of culture wars and the internet and, and discussions, that kind of whole thing went that way. It was just kind of, you know, where they, and I'm not saying Richard Dawkins holds any of these opinions. <laughs> I'm just going to be careful about mm -hmm. this. I don't live in America. Um, but certainly some of his peers were doing some of this race realism, scientific racism bullshit. Uh, lots of them were just sexist. Um, and lots of it kind of span off into various other anti-minority talking points. Um, and, and I don't think that Richard Dawkins was an activist against those positions. Uh, let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. um, but I do think some people's brains have... I do think some people have approached trans people and have just fallen down this conspiracy well. I don't think that's true of Richard Dawkins. I just think he's just, he was inevitable. This was inevitable of him. Um, and he's never going to change his mind on this. Uh, and he, I think he would deny the evidence. I don't, I don't think he's some kind of amazing skeptical overlord. Like he's obviously an accomplished no, no. writer and biologist and atheist, but uh, I mean, he's obviously not thought about trans issues for five minutes and he obviously doesn't consider us fully human. So I mean, he's he's not going to. He's never going to take any of this on properly. So he just he just won't. This will just be his view until he dies. 
Um, but some people have broken their brains on this. And I just think that society, like you said, it's got to be more complicated than some people just don't like trans people. But society t brought me up teaching me that trans people are disgusting. That is an, a, a, if you grew up in the 80s and 90s, that is a view you just probably onboarded to some degree. And some people are more willing to forget this kind of thing. Some people aren't so impressionable. Some people had new trans person early in their life whatever but a lot of people didn't and they I, had I grew this... up in the i grew up i sorry yeah i grew up in the 80s yeah, and on. 90s so i not yeah and yeah, look, yeah, you know, yeah. i educated my parents my, my educated my parents about this issue years ago and they get it my mom is a retired teacher and she had trans students and she was supportive of them which mm -hmm. you know is why it even really pissed me off what richard dawkins said about oh, oh the you know teacher pressure it's like First of all, yeah, my, nonsense, the district it? that my mom my mom taught in and that I grew up in, it's you can Google this, the Central Buck School District in Pennsylvania. It's been all over the news. It's made nationwide news. It's embarrassing. It's it's normally one of the best districts in the country, but there's like this right wing school board that is just like gone off the deep end and they you know, they're banning books and 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 just like all this stuff and, and my mom has shown up to a couple of these meetings to, you know, fight fight for you know, not doing stuff like that. And, and, and there's some videos of her, they even made it to the TikTok and YouTube. And so like when, when, when like my mom try, who's educated, who's been, you know, examining this, you know, it's just dismissed as like, Oh, teacher pressure, even though Richard Dawkins doesn't know my mother. And even though he obviously wasn't talking specifically about her, cause I didn't talk to him about this, but it's like, it's like, I just don't know how anybody can believe that, like that a teacher a teacher who, you know, I don't know what it's like over there, but in the United States, teachers are just like crapped on for like the, the stupidest things. Like you looked at my kid the wrong way and, and it's like, oh, you know, get, you know, get, get into having a meeting, bring your union representative. So I like, you know, a teacher is not going to like, like try to instill some ideology in their student knowing that they're you know there's going to be backlash and they get backlash anyway for stuff they didn't do it's all just yeah it's total nonsense i mean that's all this conspiracy theory stuff is is that it's a conspiracy theory it's people who don't know what they're talking about and they're they're just looking for an excuse i really do think for a lot of people they grew up thinking trans people are bad and then all of a sudden everyone around them is saying trans people are actually normal and if you think they're bad you're bad and that is throwing people into something where they have to admit they were wrong, they have to think, they have to change their feelings, mm -hmm. they have to confront, or there's this whole pre-made ideology worldview with a load of people backing them up saying, it's okay, you don't have to change your mind, you're the one who was right all along, and it's so alluring. But anyway, Julie, thanks for yeah. calling, we're going to have to move on, we're going to try and fit in a, one more caller okay. before we end the show, but thank you very much for calling, all and right, we'll hear you. from you in the future. Bye! Uh, so Ben, I know you are dying of sleepiness. Um, <laughs> would you like to take maybe twenty-three three for the last one? I can't hear Ben anymore. Are you muted? I'm muted. There we go. Sorry, okay. I was typing. Um, I I do want to give some the audience a little bit of incentive because I thought of a, a great I idea because um I'm yeah. tired. I already feel basically hungover. <laughs> Um, so if, if I lose today, actually, you know, maybe I'll do it for if I'll do it if I win today, cause I don't want it, people to vote for Katie just to make me do stupid stuff. Um, but I have a bottle of Malort still, which is absolutely nasty. But what I'll do is I'll do a bomb shot with Malort and pineapple monster. It will be absolutely nasty. So on the I'll show, do it, but I got to win the on the show, show during super chats at the okay. end of the show. If I win. And that means we have to get to 25 votes minimum and I win, I will, I will do the bomb shot. So I don't know what I can do to sweeten in. the deal. I'll think of it during the next call. Mm -hmm. Right. We're going to take the last call and I'm sorry for everyone who waited on the line. We had a lot of callers and uh, sorry for telling everyone to call in when, <laughs> when the lines are full. Um, but we're going to take this last call, which I don't know if it's going to be spicy. We'll see. We'll hope so. I think I disagree with what they're going to say. So let's see. We're going to talk to Greek Cod from the UK who wants to talk about penis being the source of all evil. <laughs> Greek Cod, are you there? Hello, hi, guys. 
Are you can a cod? Yes, we can hear you. <laughs> are you a real cod, or are you one of those cod, pretend yeah. cod? <laughs> no, 100% real cod. Okay, okay, okay. great stuff. I'm the real thing. So, is your penis That's evil? That's my Twitter name. <laughs> uh, like the topic I wanted to talk about is we, we all know that transphobia is highly related with misogyny because mis uh, transphobic people, transphobes usually they say things like you're not pretty enough to be a woman, which you can understand that if they, if they say that you're a trans person, obviously that's how they treat cis women as well. Like yeah. their standard about womanhood is related to beauty. We all know that. But one thing we don't all agree on is whether there is misandry related to transphobia. And from one part, I have everyone telling me that misandry doesn't exist. Some people claim it doesn't even exist. And some other people tell me it's not part of transphobia. And on the other hand, whenever I speak to transphobes, almost nine times out of ten, their arguments are things along the lines, uh, trans women are disgusting because they look like men because they think like men, because they have male biology or male <laughs> inherent characters. And yeah, I think yeah. the two are very con very contradictory. Sure. Well, I, think this good, on that? And I think this will be good to hear from both me and Ben on this, because Ben might have a mm. different take. But So I, I can see where the people who say Miss Sandry doesn't exist are coming from. Um, I think it would be like an analog to the claim like anti-white racism doesn't exist. And in in the set, and I think we need to kind of break it up into two parts, really. I won't do a big thing on misandry, but the idea that someone could be prejudiced against someone because they are a man, that's true. It's happened. You know, it it's it, I've I've seen it happen in my life. Um and it like an example might be someone feels like a man with a kid might be suspicious, like where they got that kid from, where, where, and it's probably just their own kid, whereas they wouldn't think that about a woman. Um, and, and that does have real impact on like single fathers and, and this kind of stuff. However, misandry is some kind of equal and opposite big structure force like misogyny is, like misogyny um, and, and like Patriarchy has caused women to just be property at some times, to not have the right to vote, to not have the right control of their own lives, their own body and stuff. Often people will say, you know, mis misogyny is horrible, we need to end it, and then someone will be like, oh, what about misandry? And it's like, fuck off. <laughs> this isn't yeah. a real issue compared to the issues we're talking about here. Um, but then I guess you could combat that and say something like... Um, you know, men get drafted to war and women don't, but then you could then say, well, you know, who's starting the wars? Basically, the point is, it, I think the, the important issue here is just talking about like patriarchy as a whole forces men and women to do certain things. And it is more controlling of women and treats them as not fully human. But there are still all these ridiculous expectations on men and it can cause some men to also be pushed into the not real men not fully human category and obviously that intersects with things like race but um i think this is kind of where uh part of this comes from is this kind of idea of like failed men or men who aren't deserving to be men you know if men are the superior class which lots of transphobes mm -hmm. will uh treat men as even if they will deny it um then they've got to, you know, they th that's where they deserve to be, that's where they should be. But if you're then tr betraying that and trying to become a woman or, you know, you're you're being camp or you're being gay or whatever, you're, you're failing as manhood, you, you see this kind of abuse against gay men as well, where um, they're not doing it right, so they're not real men, so that means I get to take away their human rights or whatever, or, or treat them like subhuman or something. Um, and that that is a factor in this kind of prejudice. But I wouldn't really, I wouldn't say that was a form of misandry. And I would push. Some people say, "Oh, gender criticals say they hate trans women because they're men, because men are, are all abusers and rapists. Therefore, the real force behind this all is misandry, and that explains it all." That isn't true because transphobes don't treat men like this. They don't treat cis men like this. Uh, you know, when they say things like 
trans women shouldn't be primary school teachers because they're a danger, you know, men are a danger. They're not campaigning for cis men to be not primary school teachers. None of them give a fuck about that at all. They probably have a male primary school teacher at their school and they've never considered it once. What they are doing when they say trans women are um, males, male biology and a danger to women stuff, they aren't picking just cis men in general. They are creating this kind of um, the most horrible stereotype of men, you know, the, the predator, the danger to women, um, you know, the danger to children, the paedophile, this kind of um, criminal who has broken all of the social boundaries and all the rules, who Hear the me. majority of whom who do that are men. That is who they are then comparing to trans women. And that's not because of shared chromosomes. It's because they want to describe all trans people as sexual predators. And that that is the link here. So it isn't anything about, um, you know, their disgust for men. You know, most of the transphobes who you're talking to online who are saying this are themselves men. And then mm -hmm. most of the remaining ones who aren't men are married to men and who treat men as their superiors in their everyday lives. Only, you know, the, a few of the kind of, if we go down the ladder and pick out all of the generic conservatives and stuff, there will be some sort of true turfs who are radical feminists who um, maybe hold a sort of um, maybe even separationist view where they think men are such a danger. The best thing that women can do right now is create their own spaces, to own like society away from men. Um, and then the most extreme of those, you could even say maybe were like female chauvinists or female supremacists or something. But I mean, it's not a real position that people hold. The majority of transphobes are literally just generic pro patriarchy warriors who think that trans women and trans men have digressed the rules and either are failed men or failed women or failed people and need to be treated as sexual predators or as little children who need helping. Um, and, and that's why we see this kind of dichotomy where whenever they talk about trans people, whenever they talk about de-trans people, whenever they talk about trans healthcare, whenever they talk about anything to do with trans people, it's always poor, young, little confused girls and big scary adult men with beards who are you know intimidating and threatening and sexual predators that is the dichotomy of trans people in the mind of a transphobe and that isn't because they hate men it's because they are the two roles that people fall into when they fail at patriarchy like if a if a woman doesn't do patriarchy then she needs to be forced back into it because she's confused and stupid doesn't know her own mind mm -hmm. just hasn't met the right man yet whereas when a man fails then the only thing is he's a sexual predator and that's it. And and it's it's the same thing they did against gay people, uh, same thing they still do against gay people, and it's why LGBT rights are so linked. But I don't know, Ben, do you have a, a different take on this? What do you think? Uh, no, I, I tend to agree with Katie. And, and it's like, I, I think it's important to kind of establish too, like when, when we're talking about um, misogyny versus misandry, like it's important as well, like as I know there's kind of the misunderstanding of what the concern is with regard to cis men. Um, like you get into that whole, like, but not all men conversation. And it's like, it's important to know that like, no, we, we, we know that it's not every single man that is perpetuating like the, the patriarchy or uh, committing these uh, horrific crimes. But it's when we say that the, establishment of the patriarchy itself and like we're primarily talking about hegemonic masculinity being the standard of what makes a man a man in our society and like katie was saying like failed uh masculinity and failed men is is kind of they're considered to be a separate class of people at that point in the way our social hierarchy works and so it's like when we're saying that that women uh are hesitant of men due to uh risk of assault and harassment etc it's we are meaning that men that are in that class of people that are raised to be uh, raised and socialized with this hegemonic masculinity are more likely to uh 
be perpetrators of these crimes. And so there's reasonable hesitation, reasonable uh, assumptions that this person could be dangerous. Like, and that's, I think, separate from saying that anybody with a penis is evil. Like, I think these are different conversations. And so I want to make sure that we're, we're clarifying that, um, that when, when we say, like, our responses to the not all men conversation, that's, we're not, we're not labeling like the anatomy as being the problem. It's, it's the hegemonic masculinity. But I do see that like a lot of the things that we say, uh, like Katie was going into this in a lot of good detail um, with regard to trans men being seen as less than uh, because we should have been good little girls that just stay quiet and, and don't, you know, rock the boat at all. Um, and that we just want to become part of the patriarchy. And that's why we transition at all. Um, to like certain things that people point out as being uh, misandrist, like uh, the military draft, for example, like that is all rooted in the fact that men are seen as being superior. And kind of what I see a lot of is um, you have this distinct structure of men being inherently immutably superior in everything to women and since that is immutable uh trans women therefore are just they are inherently better at everything but they are just trying to oppress women by by changing sides and like wanting to be this other side and and what it does for a lot of men is this says oh well if i admit that this is these characteristics are are not immutable like if i if i concede the point that you can uh change the way that you are seen in society then that must mean that i am not inherently better than other people and i actually have to earn respect in society instead of just it being granted to me um and so like it's like i get where people are coming from in thinking that like there's misandry involved like i can see why the concern is there I don't really feel like it's a legitimate argument for a lot of the reasons that Katie and I have kind of stated. What do you think to that? Well, that, that was a lot to unpack, but I would like to start from <laughs> the fact that I, ag <laughs> I agree that some of the cases are as you describe them. I just think that there's also a lot of cases where they're not actually saying the things that you are saying. Like you're saying they say uh, men are superior and therefore because trans women used to be viewed as men and they betrayed their manhood and they became women, that's why they are transphobes. But that's well, the they argument don't say, I see from them. They don't say it. Hold on. Like you just because they don't loud, explicitly yeah. say the argument out loud, but that is the logic that they're using. And you can tell it's the logic that they're using based on the conclusions they make from those premises that they didn't explicitly voice. So like you, you mean, look at the sports conversation and it's like, why, uh, why do they believe that trans women are inherently better at chess than cis women? <laughs> it's like, this isn't <laughs> something that, like, like you have these silent premises there, right? That they believe yeah. that, men are it's better like than people, women and these people must be men it's like the like um save our children crowd and they're like oh okay so what are the biggest issues facing children today is it being you know all the kids who need adopting is it kids not having money to eat food at school is it the lack of education for kids around the world no 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 no, no. they just want to end abortion and like I don't know, ban Democrats or something like they don't give a fuck. Like the save women's sports thing. None of the people talking about it care about women's sports at all. Uh, you know, they don't care about any of the real issues. If you asked any women's sports person, women's sports woman, I think a sports woman, if you asked them like a type, top five biggest issues in sports were, they would say like the fact that it's underfunded compared to men's sports, that women are talked out of sports. That there's like some coaches are sexually harassing people. Like, they bring up real issues, uh, but all the people saying save women's sports are just looking to ban trans people from things. Um, so yeah, you've got to look at, this isn't saying, this isn't me just declaring that they're, they believe something they don't believe. This is looking at what they say and do. 
and realizing that what they say is a load of logical contradictions and the uh, making only possible sense out of it and reverse engineering their premises. So yeah, you'll, you'll find, I mean, if you go and look at my chess tweets from the last uh, 24 hours, there are plenty of transphobes there just saying, yeah, men are superior to women. But there are lots who aren't saying that. There are lots who are saying, what biological women just need spaces away from biological males because males are more dangerous. And like, that's an argument that you can get some kind of truth for from. But that isn't, that isn't some kind of hatred of men. They aren't really making that argument. They don't really care. They just want to ban trans women from things. And you can see that by asking them a load of questions. Oh, you care about privacy, do you? So does that mean that you want to get rid of open plan changing rooms and put cubicles in? No, you've never given a fuck about that in your life. Oh, you just want to ban trans women. Like you, it, It's the same with all these things. And I think, yeah, I don't know. What do, what do you think to that Greek cod before I do another million things? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I agree there are those people, but I'm not talking about those people. I'm just saying there's also a different kind of people. And let's be honest, like transphobes are not really good at lying. Like they'll tell you I'm a feminist and then you'll find 10 posts before that that they said, we need to take away women's right to vote. Like they're not very good yeah. liars. I'm talking, about, <laughs> I'm talking about a different kind of people who to me, they seem honest. And I, don't, I really don't think they're lying. And they bring arguments like, Trans women are disgusting because they have a male brain and all males are inferior and they're rapists and they're sexual pests. Did and they, then you go and look at their profile. I haven't heard anybody say that males, male brains are inferior. I, That's not an argument I really hear. I, I've <laughs> seen, I've seen maybe a few. Um, so there, there's a, there is a corner of Twitter for um, maybe the most surface level understanding, reactionary, radical feminist themed, but not really radical feminist Twitter. And um, it's a pretty wacky place. And you, you will see this kind of kill all men posts. And lots of them dislike trans women. Uh, I, you know, I think there are some and I've spent some time arguing with them. Um, they do exist, I guess. And maybe you've stumbled into that corner or maybe you go looking in that corner and you've, you've combated with them. I think they are a very minority position amongst the transphobe movement. They are so hostile. <laughs> they aren't capable <laughs> even with cooperating with other transphobic cis women feminists. Uh, like they, I've seen some pretty explosive reactions. I mean, um, one of my uh, friends who's ex gender critical sort of came from that sphere. And there was a trans woman who posted something and she like liked a tweet from this trans woman. And that was like a whole week of discourse in their little corner of the land where they all call in her a dick panner and handmaiden for liking a tweet. It was pretty wacky times, but I don't think that they're a, a big group and I don't think that they're really a politically relevant force. Um, but yeah, I, I hear what you're saying. I, I don't think they don't exist at all. But also, I still think that even though th they will say trans men are our fallen sisters and we need to save them and trans women are just the same as every other man and they're all disgusting and we need to kill all men, like they'll hold that position. But then when you see what they do, they still post about trans people 99% of the time. So <laughs> trans people are there's something more than just that uh but yeah okay i i, I can see that they there isn't it's not impossible <laughs> are you still there i'm still here i don't know if you can hear me oh yeah hi yeah um what do yeah. you think to that we mm -hmm. might we might need to end the call in a bit but do you have any sort of final comments or no, okay, we disagree on how many they are, but at least we agree that they exist. So I'll take that. I'll take what I can get. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much okay. for having me. Um, I'll tell you what, I guess as a homework or a point to resolve our disagreement, because I think agreeing to disagree, is, as I said today a few times, is for cowards who can't justify their points. If uh, <laughs> if we disagree, then one of us is, or at, le or at least one of us is wrong. Um, I guess... You don't have to answer now, maybe come back next time. Who of the major 
gender critical, anti trans, transphobic, anti LGBT forces on in like the political sphere, who who's actually having influence and stuff. Who holds these views? Because I don't think any of the major ones do. But I don't know, maybe you can go away and think about that and we'll talk to you next time you call in. But thank you very much for your call. And I'm afraid to anyone still on the line, we are going to have to end the show there uh, because Ben slept for one hour and um, that's a good excuse to get to stop doing calls and gets me off the hook. So, <laughs> yeah, um, we we didn't have that many spicy callers this week. I would like more spicy callers in future. And I think the show, I know a lot of people come here for advice and then a cool community and I like that and it, and it's good. But also, I like the spicy callers, and I think, yeah, hashtag blame Ben, I think that um, lots of people like the spicy callers. They seem to be the ones that people watch the most. So I guess mm -hmm. if you would like, I don't really know, I'm just kind of trying some ideas, um, go and bait people into calling into this show. <laughs> yeah. um, like, if you're having an argument with someone, be like, all right then, dickhead, call into this show, talk to some real trans people, tell them to their face. Um you know, dragging some knobheads over here. I it would be cool uh, if you would like to do that. Maybe, maybe we can. So last week was actually quite spicy. I think Arden lost her patience at least twice. So, um, yeah, this is the final section of the show and the best section of the show because it's where all you hashtag blame Ben is a vote for me. Uh, super chat in five dollars mm. or more, and then we will read out your super chat live on air. And we yes. will not be doing silly accents. So let's get on with it for the first super chat, which isn't a different theme to last time. Very exciting. Do we have one? Message. <laughs> That's very cryptic. And if we get a load of hashtag blame Ben's, then we will see Ben do a shot at the end. Uh. Yes. Yeah, I'll do that. Okay. I'll do that. Okay, yeah. this is a this is a Sean one, so I'm gonna I'm gonna take it. Take Five it. pounds from Sean Isherwood. The sum of the squares of the first n Fibonacci numbers is the product of the nth and the nth plus one Fibonacci number. That's interesting. Really? Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go away and do some counting on that one. That's. I'm too tired that's for that. <laughs> I guess it's because they're... At the, at the sum of the previous one. There must be some factor of that. Okay, interesting. Cool. Cool, cool. Next. Uh, 200 uh, check, check crowns. Corona. Yeah. Check crowns yeah, from right. Naresh. I'm back and have a new kitten. So hashtag Ooh. team Michelle because that cat's the best part of my life right now. But Aww. also hashtag team Ben because Katie said Ben never gets any votes. <laughs> I mean, I, I will take your sympathy votes. Katie can trash talk me all she wants on this show and I'm here for it because uh, Miss Andrew, as we just talked about, I should have <laughs> mentioned Katie as evidence of Miss Andrew um, because obviously ben, I, I don't hate men. The only I reason you. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. No, the only reason Katie hates me is because I'm a man. Uh, no, no, she just hates me because I'm me. So uh, not a misandry argument. But uh, congrats on your kitten. That's great. Yeah, kittens are amazing. Send a photo. Yes. Next. Photos, please. Uh, 169.69 from Naresh as well. Nice. Uh, also, Jimmy said this is the least watched show on the channel, so have a double nice for morale. This show rules. Yeah, unfortunately, at the moment, uh, we are dragging in the least viewers, and I think it's because we're not spicy enough. We need more spice. I think mm -hmm. that's what we need for this show. So send these links out to the people that you're debating on the internet and let them come find us, because we, we want to talk to those people. Like, for some reason, we do. Um, yeah, for the record, Jimmy said this is the least watched, but deserves to be the most watched. Yeah, okay. The, the morale boost. It's good recovery. Yeah. <laughs> for, 499 from Aurora V. Girlfriend asked me to say hello and thank you on her behalf for and apologize. 
Apologies for missing the live show. She went in for FFS this morning. That okay. Ooh, of all the reasons reason. to miss the show, that is an acceptable reason to miss the show. I mean, maybe she should have been watching the show from the operating room while her face was being operated on. <laughs> um, but I can't I can't blame her for, you know, not tuning in while she was being operated on. So but but congrats to your girlfriend. Well, if it was this morning, I hope she likes throwing up blood because that's probably the stage she's just entering now. <laughs> mm. I I did a lot of that on the first night because when they're like when you're lying on your back and they're like drilling in your face and stuff, you just swallow loads mm. of blood and then your stomach doesn't like that. And then you're like, oh, I feel better now. And then you're like, oh, God. <laughs> yeah, I know your stomach does not like that. Yeah. Next. Ten dollars from Ghosty. I'm stunned that the LGBTQ plus people still believe the far right lie that Ezra Miller is an abusive groomer when it was proved false in three courts. Why do you think they have so little community support? I don't know anything about Ezra Miller, so I can't comment, I'm afraid. No idea. Yeah, no idea. Thanks for the super chat and thank you for the vote. We got two for Team Ben. Uh, Four ninety nine from Louise Richardson. Chess should be for anyone, and cis nor trans have an advantage. Whoever's trying to make those judgments is transphobic and confused. Hashtag Team Katie. I agree for the most part. I don't agree with that last hashtag, but everything else you said is okay. <laughs> well, I think ch chess is pro trans propaganda because, um, firstly, you have to transition across the board, and then secondly, mm, when your pawn, yeah. when your lowly pawn gets to the other side, he turns into a queen, like. That is the most trans thing I've ever heard. <laughs> so there you go. Um, 169.69 from Naresh. Thank you very much, Naresh. Um, yes, there are only two something. Sexes. The one. Oh, it says the one sexes. I had with your mum and the one I had with your dad. <laughs> this took me really long to send because of the bad oh. word filtering. <laughs> That's like, I see. That, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's great. <laughs> I'm tired and I, I could tell what it was saying. Five dollars from Robin Webster. Thanks for the show. Love you, Katie, but voting team Ben today. But there's no hashtag, no vote. Looks like he has earned it. Yeah, but apparently you hate me because there's no hashtag. I'm so disappointed. Yeah. It's okay. I'll live. Ten pounds from Lob Bon. Well deserved pint for Dr. Venus. Hashtag team Ben. Yes, maybe I will have a pint later tonight when I'm more awake. Um, it sounds like a bad idea if you're also really doing cool. light shift tomorrow, but yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, I, I get time to recover at least. Um, 9.99 from Nuzzy D. I'm a mid cishet mask. Do you think the fear panic that general cishet folks feel is stemming from their eroding social status and authority? Also, how much do y'all think this is fueled by social media. Go Jimmy your Jimmy's. I don't want to Jimmy anybody's Jimmy's. Um, <laughs> I, what are your thoughts, Katie? Yeah, um, I mean, that is uh, definitely something. I, I mean, this is kind of what we're talking about at the end of the last caller is a lot of people just grew up thinking that it was okay to treat trans people like subhuman and to have them as the butt of a joke and to be disgusted by them and suddenly they're being treated as normal valuable members of society like everyone else and they don't like that because things are changing and it it makes them a bad person um and i do i mean i, I think usually it's all just gut reaction and emotion but i think s some people do see i mean certainly this is more obviously true with racists um when uh like particularly in the usa is one of the most clear examples when black people were like freed from slavery or when they ended jim crow laws white people's sort of official social legal status over black people just suddenly disappeared uh i mean in real terms there's still the you know the imbalance to some degree but less um explicitly but people really feared that for a number of reasons i mean if if the world is that unequal you want to be the person at the top and if you're the person at the top you don't want to lose that in case you end up being at the person at the bottom and if you don't care about other people 
and that's your only driver, then yeah, I can see why people, uh, stupid people, would kind of fall for that kind of thing. But um, yeah, it's a good call. Yeah, if you call it. Yeah, I have lots of thoughts about that, but that would be more of oh, uh, it's something that I've ranted about on the sh on the show, as far as like the sociological side of the stuff, but. Or, or so don't call in, right now, but, but find someone who believes this and get them to call in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Next. I think this is yours to read. Oh, 9.99 from Lara Ava. More monies. Thank you very much, Lara. That is very kind. Is that 999 more monies or 9.99 more monies? You know, it's or 9 maybe 99.9. More money. How much is one money? <laughs> How much or maybe is it's one like money? depends on where you live. Seven point yeah. three five monies because American dollars are rubbish. Nineteen ninety nine from Kenzie Q. Thank you to all the hosts of the show. Even though I am Team Mayo, I'm forty seven and struggle every day with internalized transphobia and anxiety when I see armed people with Trump flags at Costco. But y'all keep me sane. Oh, well, I'm glad that we can provide you at least some of that. Um, I'm sorry that the world sucks, but uh, yay, Mayo. This is my, my very <laughs> profound responses today. I am so, I'm so tired right now. This is... Personally, yeah. I think the mayonnaise is the worst thing in your life, but, you know, it's all, it's all perspective. Mm. <laughs> Five oh, pounds no. from Jack KV. Gonna go. Hashtag Team Ben. Hashtag bra bla Brass Blowy Boy. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you call someone that plays the saxophone is a Brass Blowy Boy. <laughs> not definitely know? not gay at all. <laughs> I'm a Brass Blowy Boy, but I'm but I'm not gay. I'm not gay. Except that I am. I am actually gay. But <laughs> so he's a bit of a you know a one of them a uh, yeah. Brass blowy I, boy. I'm a, <laughs> Yes, yes, brass blowy boy. But I'm not that kind of brass blowy boy. I'm one of the good ones. Uh, He's a French horn player. <laughs> 65 <laughs> Swedish krona from S. Martik. Some, just some support money. Love the show. Well, thank you for your support Yay. money. We appreciate it. Fifty euros. Thank you very much. That is a very kind donation from Sampav Malhotra. Currently watching Katie's Edinburgh lecture on combating online hate and the gender critical mm. movement. I'm glad that video is still up. I don't think it has the best sound, so good luck getting through it. But I'm glad that someone's watching it. Highly recommended. Thank you very much. Love you loads. My advice for the day: trans people are people. It's that simple. Just treat people well. Be decent. If only people were capable of taking that very easy advice, the world would be a better place. We are actually much... cryptids. <laughs> At least Katie's, well, maybe... Katie and I are cryptids, but the rest of the trans I community wish I was are. Cryptid. Maybe <laughs> I wish I was like a giant praying mantis. That'd be cool. Yeah, yeah. That'd be cool. Then you could eat somebody's head off. Uh... <laughs> 20 this euros again from Sambhav Malutra for the awesome mods. Keep up the awesome work. Lots of love and hugs. Yeah, thank you, Sambhav. super thanks to all the mods in the show and to on the mods on this channel. And also, thank you very much to the call screener this week, which was, um, no, I'm looking at the wrong one. What was the date today? The 17th. The date format in America is just so insane. It is. It is oh, Jess man. This from one's Canada. Funny. Thank you very much, Jess. Okay. This um, wasn't $10... like, like the Maya, the Maya four stater thing that happened. Okay. Ten dollars yeah. from Dark Matter. Oh <laughs> it's the hole. That I should do it in my contrapoints um Maya Four Stater voice. <laughs> it's the hole that matters. Keep the men away from the holes. People are holes, and I'm very well adjusted person saying things that mentally healthy people say. Hashtag sorry I made you read that. Hashtag team whoever did. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah um that was ridiculous though i mean just Men unbelievable don't have holes. How... sorry <laughs> apparently um yeah i just did i i think i tweeted about this earlier today uh i love too the, the fact that like in in her tweet too the hilarious thing was that she explained the hole that she was talking about she was like women have holes 
the vagina. Like you're explaining, yeah. you're explaining to people what a vagina is. Like, thank you, thank you for that. She said, Appreciate it's it. just so dumb. She said, in the context of prison, it's the hole that matters. Women have a hole, their vagina, which men want to penetrate with their penis, either consensually, transsexually, or by force. Bluntly, the reason we have men in women's prisons is to keep men away from the holes. I mean, if you were an alien of specified genitals, because we're talking about male force data, we cannot have aliens without known genitals. If you're an alien with one of the two possible genitals in the universe, then um, you might believe this, but there's kind of like a meme. It, rape in prison for in men's prisons is so bad that it's literally like mm -hmm. it's like a feminist topic to tell people to stop making these horrible jokes. Like it's mm -hmm. it's widely known to be like the thing that happens in men's prisons. So it doesn't make any sense at all. It's like the dumbest argument. Anyway, let's not rant off about mayor force data and alien holes. <laughs> Ben. <laughs> <laughs> 1999 from Bell's Bazaar 228. Did you hear about the chess organization that stripped trophies from trans men and forbade trans people from competing? Sounds like they're scared of people who can turn kings into queens. Yeah, we, <laughs> I mean, we talked about that in the, the statement at the end. Uh, that's great. That's great. Um, it's great apart from I think the king is the only piece. That, no, not the only piece. It's, it's a piece that can't turn in. You can't turn into a king and you can't have the king turn. Anyway. I get the I get the gist. Thank you very much. <laughs> but wait, if you could though, like, could you break chess if you just changed that? Like, if I could turn my king into a pawn, and then therefore it's no longer a king, so I have no king for you to take, so therefore I win. You should be able to turn the pawn into a king because then you'd have more liabilities on the board, and then once you have at least two kings, then you should be able to transfer your other king back into another piece. So, as long as it go, don't this go is, we should just make game. our own chess game we should make our own chess rules i i'm down for this okay i still um, need to play matt a chess we might organize it when they're back from yes. holiday anyway ten dollars from panda hashtag team sleepy ben i was trying to get chat to vote for the hashtag team slimy ben but it seems like everyone's chickened out of that one so we've got sleepy ben instead <laughs> thanks panda i mean it's true it's true Four ninety nine from Balthazar two two eight and vice versa. Yes, you should uh, be scared of turning your queen into a king. Apparently, man, how good would it be if one of the if like the British royal family became trans? What would be so good about that is British people would have to pick between their two most favorite mm. irrational prejudices, which is hating trans people and loving the royal family like would they <laughs> disown the royals and abolish the monarchy finally i might sacrifice trans rights for that to be honest so who knows oh okay um, anyway <laughs> 499 from claire hashtag team katie thank you very much claire next we have to get to 25 for me to do the malort bomb shot so i won't do it unless unless we get to that number uh 120 check crowns from Naresh. Hashtag Team Ben because being sleep deprived isn't torture enough, uh, but because he didn't call my currency Czechoslovakian or anything. Also, kitten <laughs> picks coming to Discord soon and probably often in the future. Um, I should just make up some random currency to say whenever I don't recognize something. Um, I'll just get like Lay a currency, a uh, D and D currency generator or something like fantasy. Fantasy currency generator. Next, I was just looking up f to see what currency Yugoslavia had, just to get the wrong oh, yeah. country, even for the wrong, <laughs> get the wrong, wrong country. One. <laughs> Fifty Yugoslavian dinner from Naresh, but also because. <laughs> Sorry, Naresh. But also because, yeah, and you gave us money to correct your typo and. <laughs> Very and fun. then we pick on you for it. Uh, Five dollars from Samantha Shepard. Another great show tonight. Sleep well. Hashtag Team Ben. Uh, you only I'll wake sleep up two hours ago. In the morning. Yeah, I'm, I need to wake up. It's early for me. So, um, yeah, I, I'll get to sleep at like six next morning. Anyway, thank you. 
999 from Ramona. Hashtag Team Katie. Hashtag Ben. Go to bed. No, hashtag Ben. Get up. <laughs> no, Ben's going to be we, up we until missed, morning. So. We miss soldier sleepiness. That's why he's drinking energy drinks. Yes. Yeah, I got up early. Uh, $20 from HLI, and there's nothing there. Maybe it's Thanks, invisible. HLI. Maybe it was a sticker. Oh, maybe. 10 That's pounds true. from Helen Lawson. Dr. Ben, what is the health risks of a dry food <laughs> diet like Katie's? Hashtag Team Ben. Hashtag Love Mayo. Hashtag Ban. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, ob obstruction. Yeah, Katie is going to get a bowel obstruction from eating dry Weetabix. I, <laughs> I actually don't want any hypochondriac thing to worry about. Yeah, no, do we think... don't need to do that because Katie will just be terrified and will not sleep. How often so do you get it and I when sleep. you're eating that the food gets stuck in your throat and you can feel it going down like super slowly? And, oh, man. Uh, yeah. That happens to me a lot. And then you drink and then yeah, suddenly probably it goes bloop, and just like flushes out. You know what would help you if, you, if you ate, you know, more wet food? I'm not a cat. Maybe your food's too dry. <laughs> you're not a cat. <laughs> eating too many biscuits. <laughs> Thanks, Helen. There's there's that one meme that was like uh, feed like basically considering like your your boyfriend as, as like a cat. Like, do do you feed your boyfriend the the wet food or the dry food? And it's got the pizza rolls and the mac and cheese. <laughs> it's like it is true. Men are basically men are basically cats, and we just need the wet food and the dry food. But we need a good ratio of the wet and the dry food to be happy. The more you know. Uh, is it me? Or is it five dollars from Unstillborn? Who is this Jimmy? Everyone's talking about hashtag Team Katie. I don't know who Jimmy is. Jimmy can go fuck himself. Yeah, seconded. Next, <laughs> ten dollars from Stephanie Helms. What the spice will flow? Hashtag Team Ben. Um, yeah, let's let's get some more spice. We had some dude, some uh, atheist community person who is, uh, I don't know. Oh, yeah. How to describe yeah. it, anti-trans, call in a while ago. Maybe he should call back. Mm. I, I told him to call back, but maybe he didn't see the comments. So, Oh, he should. He should call back for sure. We'd l I'd love to have more of those conversations. Uh, the new, oh, the new meme is go Jimmy yourself. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Kind Got of it. sounds dirty. I think go fuck yourself. It does sound dirtier because you don't know exactly what is happening. I don't know. I, I imagine it involves jiggling. Comment. I think I think this sounds like a jiggling verb. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> twenty dollars from HLA. If that's the next second twenty dollars, thank you very much. That's super kind of you to donate. Next. I mean, it was kind of even if there was just one, but it's kind of even if there's two. Oh, it was twice. twice. Thank you very much. Yeah, HLI, I, I, that is super kind. Ben, uh, go for it. 120. Uh, let me see. Uh, fake, fake currency. Uh, 120 seafarer coins from Naresh. <laughs> uh, two. <laughs> To embarrass Jimmy, go fuck yourself. Seriously, I have to point out that since there's no Discord rule for host, and Katie isn't a Patreon supporter of Takish, she doesn't have access to the Takish channel. There's a Takish channel? In the well, Katie is, like, never in Discord, um, so that's a thing. But I'm curious, like, <laughs> it, is there... That might be something to... There, oh, there is a Discord rule? Oh, well, I'm I don't know what to be Yes. Am I, I am I in the line Discord? Am I in there? I don't know if I'm in there. Get in there. We're working on it. <laughs> okay, good stuff. Jim, the reason Jimmy's typing rather than doing his usual voiceover is because he's currently busy jimmying himself. So, <laughs> yeah, he doesn't want it to be obvious uh, that he's doing that. Twenty dollars from HLI. Thank you very much, HLI. It's been very kind this evening. Love is love. I want to best explain to a friend who is non-tolerant to help them understand how someone can identify as a woman, be biologically a man, and be attracted to women. Um. Yeah, that's not how I'd necessarily describe it, but I guess a good way of showing your friends is to just show them some examples of some 
trans people who are happy like that. Like there's a few famous trans lesbian couples or uh, trans people who are in relationships with women. Um, I mean, just trying to think of some actual examples to give. I mean, if they're a sort of a normy person who's not all into internet drama and stuff, um, I know that uh, Gigi Gorgeous is some famous trans YouTuber who came out as gay and uh, I don't know, I haven't followed her for years. Um, and uh, who, who's, who am I thinking of? Um, the trans representative who got silenced uh, whose girlfriend is also a trans activist. Uh, bummer, I've forgotten. I talked to them both quite a lot. Of it. Zoe, uh, Z uh, Z uh, Zoe Zephyr and... Fuck, I'm so sorry, guys. <laughs> anyway, just show them some examples of successful, happy trans people and be like, they're just trying to live their lives too. We're no different to anyone else. Or get them to call in. That'd be great. Tell them, get them to call in and argue with me. Yes. And I'll change their mind. Uh, Jimmy's quite ill and was told that cis voices need to shut up because of misandry. Yeah, Jimmy, no, you just be quiet. With cis cis, cis andry, yes. <laughs> yes. I guess it would actually be misandry uh, or mis 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 misogyn misogyn. I don't know. Uh, uh, One hundred twenty. Uh, this just every. I should just find uh, gold press random Latinum. currency for everybody. <laughs> I'm gonna do the random currency for everybody because uh, because we got uh, some more check money here and just you know to keep the mm. thing going. Um, we have uh, 120 silver pieces from Pedro <laughs> Gloser. <laughs> really uh, Yeah, <laughs> just got here. Uh, we'll check the whole show tomorrow, 11 p.m. over here now. But let's go hashtag Team Ben this time because he's lower on the screen and I have a thing about supporting underdogs. I don't know if I'm supposed to feel complimented that you're voting for me or that I'm the underdog in this. And I'm confused about why I've been labeled yeah. as the underdog. This is, you know what? This is misandry that I'm the underdog. <laughs> um, ben wants to be the overdog. <laughs> I want to be the overdog. <laughs> so, so we covered up with fake currencies. How about this one? Uh, 20... Uh, Canadian dollars from HLI. I don't know oh, how yeah, to that's... use super chat. It's another 20, 40 for Team Ben and 40 for Team Katie. Thank you very much. That is very super kind of you. Uh, we super appreciate that. Um, the donations and also the Patreon are how this show and all the other shows on this channel keep going. Uh, so thank you very much. Next. Uh, this one might. Right, Ill nice. Jimmy, this is, uh, this is you now. Yes, you've got to find okay. a new fake uh, currency. Yes, yes. Trump oh, oh this is a, this is a good one. This is a good one. Okay, um, we have 120 castle pennies from Naresh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna start saying castle pennies. Uh, give a man a fish, you feed him for a day. Give Katie a mayo, and you feed her for the rest of your life. <laughs> Hashtag team. <pen. laughs> She kills you. Yes, explain jokes are best. Yeah, no, I I got it. Yeah, yeah. She agrees yeah, exactly. clearly. Yeah. Um, I found a random currency generator, but it's not it's not working when I click generate. Um, oh. So I'm gonna do sixty five currency generators <laughs> from S Martic. Mm. Forgot to vote. Hashtag Team Katie. Thank you very much. Oh, I think that was our last super chat. Oh. Okay, thank you very much, everyone. We didn't meet the limit, but Ben did win, so Ben has to do the shot anyway, right? No, <laughs> no, no. I, it has to meet the twenty-five. Ah, uh, we didn't 25, make it. We so. didn't make it. So Maybe although Ben won, Ben is the real loser here because he doesn't get to have a shot. Um, oh, we got it. another one. Five dollars oh. from Firebird XX, which obviously responds to. Uh, Chromosomes. What is the question you want to hear most from GCP? What's GCP? Um, Any ideas? Gender critical, gender critical people? people. Oh, I um, think. I, I think I just want. I don't know. I want them to call in and explain some of their contradictions or justify them supporting the most disgusting people on earth. Like, if you, 
I, I don't know how many gender critical people still could believe genuinely believe that they're feminists. But if you think you're a feminist and you're like watching this show, or maybe you're not, and you still think that you support someone like Kelly J. Keene or Graham Linehan or someone like that, and over the views that we're saying on here, then like, what the fuck are you doing? Come and explain yourself. Come and explain to me why I should be banned from all the things I do today and do in order to live my normal life. Um, and why you feel comfortable campaigning to remove the rights of tens of thousands of people in this country alone for what, your own feelings? It's just disgusting. Like, justify yourself or come in with some claim. Do you know what I really want to do? I want to have some gender critical pe person call in and just give their perfect binary definition of sex. Well, it might be better if they did it in writing because they'll just come up with some example that's hard to come up with a counter example off the top of your head. But we'll just go through and do the counter examples. Or you'll come up with some logical fallacy and we'll just talk through it because you all claim to have this binary definition and you don't have one. Anyway, 120 checkaroons from Naresh. Ben, if you feel lazy, just call it Zollers. <laughs> anyway, uh, hashtag Team Ben, there is no vote limit, right? There is no vote limit. If you want to see Ben do a shot, Naresh, you can vote in 12 more times. <laughs> mm -hmm. You can. You can do uh, it. No, wait, no, we're not stopping you. you. We're not stopping you. If you want to send us 1 trillion checkaroons or Chazolas. Checkaroons. <laughs> I'm going to call them checkaroons. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> Runes is one of them suffixes that I just add to things when my brain's off. I often call Poppy <laughs> nicknames end in rune. Like Dopperoon. Wait. That's one of her nicknames. Wait, you're, you're, you're implying that there's a time when your brain isn't off? <laughs> <laughs> Lol. <laughs> <laughs> See, I can say that because Joke I'm a episode. man and I'm just in, I'm just inherently better. I'm just, you know, throwing that out there. Ben, haven't you seen my chromosomes? I'm better than you at chess. This is decided. Yeah, you're better There's than no me at everything. Yeah, no, you're better than me at everything because of your chromosomes. So, yeah, it's true. I will when never be good at chess. When people walk into the room, yeah. when people walk into the room and they need a doctor, they'll be like, "Is there a doctor in here?" And then you'll say something, and they'll be like, "Oh, finally, a real man!" And they'll turn to me. That's that's how that's how it works. <laughs> that's how this that's works. What real yeah, life's... yeah, yeah. Because you and you my... are the like if you look up man in the dictionary, it's definitely a picture of this very <laughs> feminine woman. <laughs> Someone said to me the other day on Twitter that I was the epitome of the word, oh, the epitome of male. I was like, yeah, I always saw that. I was like, what? Okay, I'll take that. This I person, guess. Um, real? <laughs> most men, I'm sorry, but you're not really meeting up to the standards. Uh, you've got a long way to go. You've got a lot of uh, estrogen injections to go <laughs> before you can reach up to the might of my maleness. Um, yeah, I think that's the end yeah. of the show. Thank you very much, everyone, for watching. If you know some way of getting spicy callers to call in, do it. We need some more spice on this show. Next week, I want to hear tales from the trenches of absolute horror from Arden and Ben about how it was the most spiciest show ever, and both of them yes. are destroyed and defeated in combat by the intellectually superior transgender hating movement. Uh, so, let's do it. But until then, thanks very much for watching the show. Ben, would you like an ending thought? You bl uh, brass blowy boy. Yeah. <laughs> ben Bye. has no thoughts. Bye, everyone! <laughs> is the show going to end? Oh, yeah, it is.